Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide and walkthrough. And this time we are getting it all in the seriously beautiful and chilled out lake. Now this game was developed by Gameos, Gameos? Sorry, butchered that one. Published by Whitethorn Digital and is available for usually around £15.99 slash $19.99. So we play as Meredith Weiss, who has a two-week break from the big city and software company she works in to fill in for her dad's postman job back in good old Providence Oaks. So, I mean, it's not really a break, a break then if we still have to go to work. Hmm. Now, this plays very much like your life as strangers, tell me wises, etc. So lots of unskippable dialogue, but it is an interesting story nonetheless. And this intro music is goddamn awesome, by the way. Uh, achievements wise, very easy, no stress, all we have to do is find two things, do a few side quests and that's about it. Now the endings are slightly pain-ish, though they're not very hard at all, but you have to replay from about 25 minutes uh, previous from where the autosave was because of all the dialogue and all the uh, inability to save during cutscenes or dialogue. One ending as well is for leaving in the RV, which we will need specific dialogue options for, but of course I'll be letting you know, because what kind of guide maker would I be if I didn't tell you, huh? <laughs> so following along with the video, because it's uh, very slow paced and chilled, you, should have the need, you shouldn't have the need to pause it at all, but you're looking at around 5-6 to six hours to finish in the game, and I've only edited out the endings as you'll see, but I've cut nothing out in the game whatsoever, so you should just uh, follow along lovely like I do. Well, with, with I do. Sorry, it's very early in the morning. My brain is still not quite functioned there. So anyway, with all that being said, then let's begin. So I've yammered on for about two minutes. So here we are then in the big city. Uh, to be honest, if I lived in a town with about 27 people, yeah, I'd probably end up in a big city in a goddamn big apartment as well. Anyway... Like I said, lots of unskippable cutscenes, lots of unskippable dialogue as well, so... And remember, this is 1987, so don't go taking the piss at the size of the uh, computers there. That was very advanced back in the day. Now, you've got it on your phone and your smart tablets and yeah, your young people today, little bastards. Uh, anyway. Oh, and our boss Steve is friggin' annoying. Yes, we made the deadline. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I feel so bad you couldn't make it. Hope you guys had a nice Labor Day party. Oh, yes. I mean, the band was great, and Mike fell in the pool. <laughs> oh, and then Roy got really sick. No, wait, Brian. And then he fell in the pool, too. And, no, Roy. Uh, wait. Ah, well, I'll tell you all about it at work tomorrow more. Well, <laughs> afternoon. I, I won't be there for two weeks, remember? Oh, wait, yeah. But, uh, do you really have to... <laughs> Two weeks is a lifetime. Yeah, Steve, I really have to. But I will continue testing for Addit. Oh, okay, right, awesome. Um, you know, I better get some sleep now. My plane leaves early in the morning. Okay, Meredith, have a wonderful flight. I, I'll talk to you soon. Did I say 1987? I obviously meant 1986. So here we are. Then we don't get the uh, don't get to see the plane ride, which is which is a shame. I I want to be first class, bro. But uh, no, this is a very nice little town, very nice little city. The lake is really beautiful as well. Um, and it's a case where everyone knows everyone, which is not always a good thing, especially if you're a especially if you're a horn dog as well. You know that that never works out well. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get into what we actually have to do now. Again, very simple. You know, there's nothing too complicated. You can walk a little bit faster with the right trigger button as well. By the way, this this is the intro, I mean. I don't know why, but this is... <laughs> it's, it's just awesome. This music intro, absolutely banging. Banging! Sorry, listening to that then. Yeah, it's very nice. So, yeah, so like I said then, a couple of things we can do. Um, you press the right bumper when you are in the uh, mailman truck. Or I'll just call it the truck from now on. 
um, and that'll open up your map so obviously you know where you're going um, the left bumper brings up your diary so what day it is etc and if you press the right trigger you can walk a little bit faster oh and a few uh, frame rate issues there for some reason what's happening anyway go up to a mailbox press A to put the mail in the mailbox and voila that is basically the game complete now we've got to repeat this for about five to six hours <laughs> I think I should be able to face the challenge <laughs> I bet. Didn't you go to MIT? Yeah. I left here from Massachusetts uh, 22 years ago. Shouldn't you get a job in computers then? That's really booming right now. Well, actually, I'm... Uh... Hold that thought. We just arrived at our next address. It's a package this time, so you'll have to get it out of the back. Well, thanks for interrupting this there, Frank. You and your mustache are going to have it. I'm going to shave it. Anyway, press A to exit of the mail truck, go to the back of the truck, press A again. It's very all complicated stuff this, so I hope you're all writing it down as well. Press A to pick up the one package, and we'll close that automatically. Walk to the front of the house, remember you can press the right trigger to walk slightly faster. Not too much, you know, you don't want to stress yourself out by carrying packages all day. And then press A, of course, to ring the doorbell. And then press A to drop the package as well. A, 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 A. It's going to be stuck in your head all day. Nice gardens, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, nice gardens, nice bike there. Not steel, because, of course, everything I, everyone always says it was all different back in 1986. You could leave your doors open, your legs open, your butt open, everything, and nobody would try and do a thing. Uh, what was the last two I just said? Ignore them. Can't a computer do that for me? Sure, there are programs for that, but you'll still have to put in some work yourself. I was afraid you were going to say that. I'll bug you about it another time. Our next address is right around the corner. Ah, <sighs> there's no place like home. Sure isn't. Can't wait to get home either. The Mets are playing the Giants. Before I get out, what time do I start tomorrow? 7 a.m. sharp. Just check in at the post office. Okay, Frank. See you tomorrow. Adios. So, with the most complicated tutorial you'll ever know uh, out of the way, now we can walk to the front door of the house. Uh, try not to go the way I just went there, which is away from your house. Yep, yeah, so walk to your front door. So, this will be a recurring theme then. We'll do the... Um, Deliver the post for the day, have some conversations, we end up going home and we'll end up usually speaking to our ma, our pa, or Steve, the annoying boss, who's actually just very happy, but you can actually skip this intro as well, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. Uh, so if you press the start button there, you can see the skip intro button, and we are just going to skip it because, again, it's a lot of talking. Sadly, though, that is the only cutscene and only dialogue that you can skip. Um, no. A lot of dialogue options, like I said, don't matter. So you can either be as nice as you can, or you can be as jerky as you want. Completely up to you. Because for some reason, even the jerky response is... Um, everyone else just is just super nice here. And that's kind of frustrating. I was kind of hoping for a bit of a banter or a bit of an argument here, but maybe nobody in 1986 got the memo yet. Uh, but yeah, so you can choose any dialogue options. Only a couple during the game, I will obviously let you know when they are, when it is. So press A to get in the mail truck, and as you can see there, bottom left hand corner, it is a kind of open world thing. I can't run any anyone or anything over though, which is sad. Um, but pressing the right bumper there gets out your map, and the first thing we're gonna do is get our first missable achievement actually. So on the left hand side, you can just see like, what kind of looks like a bit of a dirt, uh, a thin track, dirt track. <laughs> dirt track, that means two things. Or well, it can if you think hard enough. So right at the end of there is where we are going. So press again the right trigger there to uh, drive. Obviously left stick to move. I was hoping this was going to be a more sort of a Grand Theft Auto or Simpsons hit and run thing. Where you can run things over and people just get up without injury. But uh, no. No. The developers weren't exactly going for that. Which is, which is a shame. Maybe they can come up with a second late game where you can. Anyway, just heading all the way. Keep following the waypoint, of course with the X button there to put on the map, sorry, forgot to mention that bit, heading up all the way to the top, and like I said, this is where our first missable achievement is, because we never have to come to this part of the game 
again. So it can actually be missed. And there we go. As soon as she says, oh, I remember this place where back in the day when I was a youngin, I tied an onion to my belt. Um, <laughs> there we go. So we got our first achievement and now we can start delivering the mail. Now, what, we're, what I was hoping for as well was the chance to upgrade the, um, there you go, left bumper gets out your diary there, what date it is and what day it is. But I was hoping you could upgrade your lake, uh, your lake, upgrade your truck so, you know, you could get turbo boosters and a couple of rocket launchers on there or something to make it go a little faster, but that's fine. So you can actually get the delivery list out if you wanted to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me again, bloody hell. It's not COVID, uh, but there's really no need. Um, all the delivery list does is obviously tell you what uh, what street you're at, but it says that just on the main map anyway. So there's nothing that can get any confusing or anything. So as you can see, we're already on Main Street. So if we get out of the truck, go to the back of the truck. Remember, you're on Main Street, so just look for the Main Street package. And there we go. And that is that then for the next <laughs> five to six hours, like I said. Um, now, if there are, if you've got two packages for the same street, it'll tell you the number again on the right next to the mini map. Anyway, so nothing can nothing can be missed. This this woman is an absolute Karen. No offense to Karens, but that's how we refer to you now. Or oh, she's just a Joykoff. Reagan. So now you're back, huh? I know what it's like. Actually, this is only temporary. <sighs> That's what I said, too, a long time ago. I wonder if it's gonna rain today. It's been raining a lot lately. So we'll just nip back into our truck. You know, we're not gonna be talking every time that we need to make a mail delivery <laughs> or anything like that because, you know... Well, what have I got to talk about for six hours except, uh, you know, the plans for world domination. Whoops, wrong video, wrong video. Scratch that. Um, but yeah, so that, obviously, this is the general consensus. Um, I do try and crash into a load of things, but, um, you know, you can't crash into anything. You can't run anyone down. That's, that's the whole point of video games. If you have a stressful day, you can run people down without consequence. Don't do it in real life, though. Only in games, okay? Um, but, yeah, so, like I said, I'm only going to be talking sort of during this, these opening bits uh, just as we get used to the town, uh, get used to where everything is. Basically, uh, if you um, press the left trigger to zoom out, it is basically just one big circle with a lake in the middle. Uh, but there are four or five fast travel points that we will gain access to a little bit later on, which makes our time a little bit shorter. Um, but otherwise, even after this first day, you'll just get used to where absolutely everything is. So, try and take it all in. Try and crash into as many things as you want, if you want. But then again, thanks to the slow speed of the mail truck, uh, you'll just be wasting precious seconds. And there we go. <sighs> nah, backed out of that. Pussy old one out of that one. Sorry. <laughs> I am scared little biznitch. Um, so... Yeah, like I said, a lot of the times with mail that we drop off, a lot of the times there are no dialogue options. We just deliver the mail and crack on. A lot of the, another lot of the times though, they are where we have to speak to these people. Now, what I do advise, if you want to make the game a little bit shorter, I'm not sure how much shorter, but basically, a lot of the people through these games will ask you to uh, do things with them. So, with Laurie later on, she says, "Do you want to watch a movie later?" Angie, oh, in fact, we need Angie for an achievement, so that's not a good one. Um, this old woman right here who just, I'm sorry, old women are awesome, but she does my tits in. Uh, she's going to ask us to do something. People are going to ask us to do something. Now, unless I state otherwise, to save time, don't do it. Because it just, it just adds genuinely a couple of unnecessary minutes on. Because we'll end up going fishing, we'll end up going for food where we don't actually have to. Um, but that was me just spamming through the dialogue options and not really realizing. So, if people ask you to do stuff, honestly, to save yourself a bit of time, just don't do it. But if you want to actually do it, then it's up to you, isn't it? 
I, I'm not the one to di dictate you. It doesn't affect any achievements, so I'm not the one to dictate you. Anyway, here is Miss Jenkins. Over the top old woman's voice. I don't know, but did my tits in. Anyway, stop yammering. 22 years to be exact, but who's counting? <laughs> Has it been that long? That's almost oh, two Genevieve's ago. <coughs> Calm down, Genevieve. You're going to live forever. She isn't, but shh. You do remember me, don't you? How could I forget Miss Mildred Jenkins? And her cats, of course. Seems like they've multiplied. Yes, I do like cats. Is that such a crime? So what if I have slightly more of them than I used to? Like Genevieve here, and Thomas, and Oliver. Anyway, did you have a package for me then? Yes, here you go. Ah, thank you, dear. Looks like another gift from my son. Still doing everything to get into my good graces, except actually drop by. Well, anyway, gotta run. Run along, dear. Give Emily my best. Goodbye, Miss Jenkins. Genevieve. Now, there's only one crazy cat lady I know, and she goes, rah, 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 from The Simpsons. And she's the cutest cat lady. But we are, like I said, this this opening bit, we are going to just be uh, meeting everyone and getting used to everyone. Um, Mildred right there, annoying as she is, we're going to be needing one of her cats for an achievement as well. So we can't just put her in the bin straight away. Almost crashing into Laurie and killing her there. Sorry, so, sorry, hon. Still new to this, still new. Uh, obviously make sure to grab the package first and again there's nothing you cannot do no wrong because Meredith will always say stuff like that and uh, you just, there's no way you can go wrong in the game uh, don't go to the door go to Laurie who's working on the car of course and once again you're gonna have a lot of a lot of cutscenes a lot of dialogue uh, so well <laughs> funny Laurie um, but like I said, unless stated otherwise, you can just pick any dialogue option you want. But that doesn't explain why Frank gave you the keys for the goose. The goose? Yes, your white and wobbly van, duh. I'm Lori, I'm Providence Oaks mechanic. And I'm the one who keeps the goose running. Well, Thomas is my father. Does that count? Thomas! Yes, that surely counts. My father has been teaching me since the day I was born. There is no one better in P.O. than me. And I have to get back to work now. But I suppose you may drive the goose. On one condition. If there's ever anything wrong with it, you bring it back to me, yes? All right. All right, I promise. Good. Perfect. Uh, did Frank tell you about the radio? No. It currently only receives the local station. Plus, sometimes it cuts out altogether. If that happens, just give it a big old bang on the dashboard and that should fix it right up. I'm working on it, I promise. Okay, thanks, Lori. No problem, Miss W. And so, next up then, what we're going to do is meet um, one one guy who... How can we put this? He seems desperate. He seems nervously desperate, like he hadn't had the touch from a woman for a long time. Um, and of course, we'll get to know his story, but no offence, he did my tits in a little bit as well. Don't be so nervous, buddy guy. Hey, don't be so nervous, friend. Uh, but well, anyway, we'll see who we mean. He is a lumberjack, and you think, well, he's strong and manly. Uh, but he's kind of a soft old teddy bear. So, again, you've got a couple of these um, 
off-road sort of things, but you can clearly see them on the mini-map, so again, you can't really get lost, but just keep on following the way I'm going. Again, this is just going to be another one of those introductory ones, uh, but there is a hidden left path right here, so make sure to just go meow, and then have a nice conversation with Robert. Seems all manly. In the end, though, is just a big, giant, soft, cuddly teddy bear, which, I mean, that's never actually a bad thing, really, is it? But he just seems so nervous, like nobody's touched his pee-pee in a long time. A rare sight for a secluded lumberjack? <laughs> yeah. Last time I saw a human being was about six years ago. <laughs> I'm here to deliver mail, and I come in peace. I'm Meredith. Thank you. I'm Robert. I hope the peace will be everlasting. Let's see what's inside. Oh, what the... That... Doesn't sound good. Crap. That's what it sounds like. Bull crap. Freshly baked bull crap. Hey, the sound can't be worse than the smell. I'm sorry, but I have to take a better look at this. Have a nice day. And now where we're going to head then is to... Now we've basically got that fast travel point, the woods there. So anytime you need to go, you got the woods to nip to, which just makes life that little bit easier as well. So like I said, we're going to unlock another two or three fast travel points during the game. But what we can do is just head straight to Main Street, fast travel there. I'll be using that fast travel point a lot, which probably only saves like 10 to 15 seconds. But hey, you know, people got places to go. People got places to be in. Uh, so we're going to take a nice little drive now down to Moe's Diner, which, I mean, this is definitely my favourite part of the game just because I'm a chubby, soft, cuddly, teddly bear with huge man muscles, but I really like food. And they keep talking about pie. And that's enough to get... If you want me to do anything, chuck me a pie. I'm happy. I'll do anything for food. Which is kind of technical food prostitution, really. I... Don't know if I'll be arrested for it. Still, who cares? So that is where we're heading. We're going to have, again, another long and skippable dialogue cutscene with uh, Maureen. Bam, crash into the car. Oh, see, at least a bit of damage. Got to make it fun. A little bit of damage. Don't forget the package, <laughs> of course. Don't forget your own package, Meredith. Yeah, just a shame we couldn't, you know, crash, smash, bash like the Simpsons hit and run. Where we crash into things, but it's still fun because nobody gets hurt. Except people. Meredith Wise? As I live and breathe. Come here, hon. Uh, now, let me look at you. My, oh my. A few lines here and there. And the occasional gray hair. But by gosh, it's you, all right. Well, hello to you too, Maureen. Oh, don't be like that now. It suits you. Age only makes a person more distinguished, is what I always say. To the mirror. Now come here. Tell me everything. Okay, one quick drink then. I know you're busy, huh? Little Bird told me all about your temporary mail job already. News goes around pretty quickly around here. So, coffee? Something stronger? I warn you, I will not take no for an answer. It's like I'm 17 again, Maureen. In that case, you're welcome, honey. Two coffee, coming right up. And one piece of blueberry pie, if I remember correctly. You had one almost every afternoon after school at one point. Oh, you know me too well, Maureen. Always have, always will. Ashley, one blueberry pie. And Ashley, uh, could you keep an eye on the bar for me for a bit? I'm going to take my break now. You're a real trooper. <laughs> Ashley? Oh, sweet Mary, what are you doing? Uh, is everything okay, hon? Oh, Lord have mercy. 
That didn't sound good. Honestly! First the roof and now this? Ugh, that poor kid is like a disaster magnet. I'm sorry, Meredith. Looks like I've got my hands full for a bit. Next time, I want to hear everything, you hear? Uh, don't be a stranger now. So not only could Ashley in the kitchen couldn't cook, it seems like he couldn't speak either, which he kind of got a problem as well. Is he blind and deaf as well that he can't uh, hear or see anything? Uh, sounds like he had his tongue cut out. But as soon as we get out of there then and all the post is done for the day, we can now head to Main Street, head to the post office, and that will be day one done. Now we still, of course, got a couple of people that we're going to see. Um few friendships to get along with, few relationships that we're going to try and get inside of as well, because, hey, we're a starved woman who focuses on her career. We need some touching too, you know. Not that I'm very career-driven, I currently still work in a factory, for Christ's sake. But, <laughs> but... Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's Mom. How are you? How's the job? Hi, Mom. I'm doing great. It's so relaxing to be outside and drive around. Ah, oh, that's great to hear. Dad says it's strange not having to drive the truck anymore. <laughs> I can imagine that. How is Dad? Can he handle all this freedom? Ugh, don't get me started. He went on two fishing boat trips already. And then there's the late night poker with his new buddies. Oh, I'm almost out of coins. I'm calling from a bar and Dad's ordering a margarita again. <laughs> Talk soon. To be honest, I wish our Ma and Pa had a, f a bit more juicy gossip. Now you can choose to do whatever you want, watch TV, read a book. Again, unskippable, so you have to just, you know, sadly um, carry on with it. But yeah, why not just say like... Oh, I mean, your dad went to the swingers party, and oh my god, now he's got an anal bead, and oh, whole hell's playing loose. Not not that you want to know if your mother and father were doing that, personally, but you know what I mean, it's just always the same stuff. Dad's getting drunk, and I'm just watching him do it. Wow, thanks so much, super interesting. <laughs> So then, here we are, day three. See, look at this, already flying through it. Well, we've still got about five hours left. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, we are getting through it, though. So, again, if you want to turn the radio on or off, you can just press the Y button. Uh, really, there's only Jack talking to uh, people around the town. And there's only two songs. But, holy crap bags, are, the, are those two songs generally catchy? I found myself um, singing along to them. R quite regularly actually towards the end of the game um, now there's not a lot going on uh, at the beginning of this chat again there's going to be a few more familiar faces that we're going to be seeing a few new characters we're going to introduce ourselves to uh, but the general thing that I do um, as long as we're not going for a specific achievement I normally deliver all the mail around the main sort of town area and then go around the rest uh, just because the most the majority of it is in the town area so you know, it's what we do. So we're going to deliver two letters um, here, both next door, but Meredith mentions about the same handwriting. So, hmm, now she says party invitation. Now my guess is it's an out of party. It's an out of town party, if you know what I mean. You know the ones where there are balloons in the toilet, but they're not balloons. And those beads, <laughs> they don't go around your neck. <laughs> See that dildo on the wall? Oh, oh, sorry, no. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, that is the general thing that we do. Um, chuck everything out mainly around town, but we are going to meet an old acquaintance, an old friend, in just a moment. Did these folks order? Oh, we're to a red light. 
Welcome to the Flick Shack. How can I help you? Got a package for you, ma'am. Hold on. You're our new postal worker? Talk about not looking the part. <laughs> is that a compliment? Trust me, it definitely is. Well, thank you then. Name's Meredith, by the way. Meredith Weiss. Angie, Eastman. So, what brings you to Providence Oaks? Um, well, I used to live here. Then I didn't, and now I'm back. Ah, I myself have been here for six years. Must have been in your didn't period. Yep, that would be smack dab in the middle of it. What brings you here? I used to live someplace else, then I moved here. Hmm. Touche, Mrs. Eastman. Miss. So, how's business? It's... Uh, it's booming. People in Providence Oaks sure like their movies. <laughs> I guess it's because there's not much else to do around here. Might as well watch a flick, right? Mm, you certainly have a lot of them. Choice is everything. Nothing quite tickles the imagination like the right movie at the right time. Hmm. Maybe I should watch more movies. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Eastman. Uh, call me Angie. And here, someone just returned this, and it should be right up your alley. The postman always rings twice? <laughs> My kind of humor. Well, I don't know anything else about you, Mrs. Temporary Postal Worker. <laughs> Miss. But touche, Angie. All right. I'll check it out if I have the time. Take your time. This isn't exactly the most popular flick in the shack. And there's plenty of choice, regardless. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Angie. Same here, Miss Meredith. So, Angie is going to become qu quite a prominent feature in our life, and we're going to be using her for an achievement later on. Not using her, of course. Now, we are going to rename her store. She called it the Flick Shack. I'm going to call it the, uh, the, the uh, Flick the Bean Shack, because that's hilarious. Great looking movie titles there. Wonder what they're all based on. Hmm, I've got no idea. Um, but yes, so Angie will become quite a prominent figure in our life. Again, she actually is one of those that you can either just friendship with or relationship with. So I think it's co very cool little ideas like that in um, games such as this, where you can do who you want or not do who you want. I think it's very cool features, things, little things like that, make a game even better. Um, but yeah, so we'll come to her a little bit later on. She is going to be one of our achievements. Um, but we are actually, we will be getting another achievement in the terms of the old woman. So for now, like I said, we're just going to be delivering all the crap around. This is where our old best pal lives. And we're going to be all like, Oh my god, you're my old best friend. Who, by the way, sorry, gets annoying. <laughs> Through the majority of the game gets uh, rather annoying towards the end. Sorry. Commander Grace, we have established communication with ground control. How do you wish to proceed? Tell them we've landed the rocket! Ground control, we have landed the rocket! We will now begin our experiments! Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute! Commander Grace, permission to explore? Permission granted! Yep, we're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure. Here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait, what? Meredith? Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Who are you? What? For real? You don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Wait a minute. Kay? Great. And now I busted my colander. I knew opening the door in this thing was a bad idea. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with the colander thing. The helmet. Yeah, clearly. But it seems I'm not the only one who came in disguise. Got me there. 
You're Kay Evans now? Don't sound so surprised. But yes, I married Barry. Evans? I'm sure you remember our high school star quarterback. Mom! Be right there, Commander Grace! Scanning for alien life forms. That's my little scientist back there. She's crazy about space travel, as you may have guessed, even after the whole Challenger thing. You married Quarterberry? And had kids? I had no idea. Well, obviously a lot can happen in 22 years, so... Time flies. So, I heard you were back in town for a while. From Maureen. That's right. I ran into her yesterday at the diner. The kitchen caught fire, so your Uncle Stan is gonna have a field day. Nope. It's Moe's diner now. Like I said, a lot of things happened while you were away. Also, I work there now. At the diner. That's great. Maybe I'll drop by sometime. Yeah, we'll see. Ready for a liftoff! Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time for this right now. Can't get stuck on the moon on my own, and I have to get ready for work. See you around, Em. <laughs> Good to see you, Kay. Evans! <laughs> Commander Grace, hold up! You'll never guess what I just found. You can say that again. Okay, so that was pretty awkward. <laughs> nice. But I suppose if you didn't keep in touch with your best friend for 20 years because you went off gallivanting, visiting places you shouldn't have been, and, you know, being quite a big figure in a software company, then, yeah, I suppose it does get a bit awkward after a while, doesn't it? So what we're going to do now, we're going to head to that little gaggle of mail letters right there. So that's where we're going to head, obviously, back to where um, Mildred lives. And, like I said, we're going to be getting the Cat Lover Achievement. Now, this one actually comes up as a side quest. And I, you can't actually continue the game without doing the side quest. So, technically, this one is unmissable anyway. So, it doesn't really matter. But, of course... Ah! I crashed into him. Um, it, <laughs> like I said, it's un it's unmissable. But, I've got to show you what to do anyway. Because, what again, what kind of guide maker would I be? I'd be a useless one. So what we're going to do, we're going to head to the right, and we are just going to drop off this letter, and of course Mildred lives on the main road, so drop this one off, go speak to Millie Mildred, and life is good. Apart from having to speak to Mildred, because... Uh... Ziegler, huh? Don't think they ever mentioned them. Now, I must admit, I made a little bit of an editing boo-boo. It's not too bad, but what we're actually going to do first is go to the right. We're going to go to the right and deliver the letter first. Basically, if you end up speaking to Mildred, she's going to give you a cat, and you have to go to the bait shop to then come back to then deliver this letter. So, I've done that in the wrong way, so what we're going to do is deliver, deliver this letter first before speaking to Mildred, just so, again, that saves a good couple of minutes having to go back and forth. Um, now, I only say it's an editing boo-boo because what we do after we deliver this letter, um, I'm going to end up just outside Mildred's house. So from here, just go back on the main road and go ahead and speak to Mildred again. So apologies about this um, bit of crappy editing there. Um, I <laughs> did really screw that one up. But like I said, it's literally just opposite from where we just delivered that last letter anyway. So you can't miss it, and you can't miss the dear old squeaky over-the-top old voice on her front lawn with the cat. So this dialogue option is going to happen. Now, of course, when she asks, oh, what can we do? We're obviously going to say, yes, we'll take him. We'll sort him out. So. I mean, I'm not a vet, but he looks fine to me. Well, fact is, you're not a vet, are you? You know who knows about animals, though? It's Mr. Mackey. He runs the old bait shop by the lake. Could you take Mortimer to him? Oh my god, what a biatch. Sure, I'll get right on it. Here, little kitty, come on. Sure, I'll get right on it. And this, and this is the start of things where people ask us to do things or go places. 
like I said, unless I obviously state something for a specific achievement or anything, um, you can actually just say, whoops, can't do that, sorry, haven't got the time. Um, and like I said, doing that will save a good couple of minutes. Um, me being an idiot, though, spammed the most of it. But I mean, it's interesting to go to these places anyway, so it really, really depends. Up to you. Because if you say no, you can just pause the video when I have to go, like, fishing and doing other bits of ass crap. So, now that we have Mortimer, the cat, we're obviously just going to head head behind us and just go all the way to the bait shop. Whoa, no, old deer in the lorry. Get up my ass. This, <laughs> it's not open for business. Whoa. Look at this. Seven. Right, so they can ram us off the road. Oh, I see how it goes, game. So they can ram us off the road, but we can't ram them off the road. Okay, okay. I'm waiting for an update where you better Simpsons hit and run it. Because, mate, I will re-download this game and do that again. Um, anyway. Eh, stupid. You, 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 you goddamn butthole. Luckily, though, I suppose we've got no damage. Which, again, is not really fun, is it? Uh, but still, uh, just heading all the way straight. Nowhere to go. Just straight until, as you can see, there's going to be a little bit of a right that we can take off. Again, we're going to have a little bit of conversation. We're going to meet Mr. Oh, Mr. Mackey, okay. Um, that's bad, okay. Uh, but we are going to meet him for the first time. He's going to take the cat. And then to get the actual cat lover achievement, we're going to have to come back tomorrow. So we're going to have to come back the following day to pick up the cat. To give it to El Bicho Mildredo. And then that is where the achievement will unlock. Now, just head up the stairs at the back. And that is where oh, Mr. Mackey, okay, is. Mr. Mackey, I know you're close, but... What? I'm Meredith Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Meredith Weiss. Thomas, kid. I remember you running around the lake when you were yay high, getting into all sorts of trouble. What can I do you for? Mildred Jenkins tells me you know a lot about animals, and, well... Oh, hi there, little fellow. What's your name? Apparently it's Mortimer. Well, pleased to meet you, Mort. Hmm, he's a little sluggish. Has Millie been feeding him cupcakes again? Cupcakes? I hope not. <sighs> Leave him with me, I'll put him on a diet today. Maybe even catch him a fish if they're biting. With any luck, he should be up and running in the morning. Sounds good. Sure thing. Goodbye, Miss Weiss. Okay. Bye, Mr. Mackey. Bye, Mortimer. I don't even care that I told on Mildred then. Don't feed your c cat cupcakes and don't be bitchy towards me. Because I will ruin your life. Ruin your life. So the next thing that we're going to do then is head to the woods fast travel and go down towards the bottom of the lake. Now you've probably just seen on the map there a letter, but that was the letter that we already delivered before we went to Mildred's house. So yeah, just ignore that. B bit of an editing boo-boo on my part there, but I just tried to save us a couple of minutes. So please don't hate me. So again, like I said, just, if, you know, if you ever get stuck, of course you shouldn't. But if you ever do get stuck, press X to put a fast travel point on. Or you can just keep looking at the map. Everything's just so chilled and... <laughs> Up yours, man! You do not... Nobody gets past the mail truck. Nobody. I feel like a... I feel like a transformer in this. But one of those really slow, you know, sluggish ones who's sniffed glue all throughout his school childhood. And went off the rails a bit um, in his adult life. But uh, anyway, just <laughs> head towards the next package location, please.
That's heavier than I thought. Hello, sir. Parcel for you. Hello? Anyone home? It's the mail. One minute, I'm busy. If you could just accept the parcel and let me be on my way. Is that a parcel for me? No, it's for Bigfoot. You can just put it on the counter. All right, have a nice day. Yeah, okay, ginger pew demon head. Yeah, I bet you're a bloody hit with the ladies, ain't ya, you goddamn ginger ass? Not, of course, saying that there's anything wrong with gingers. I mean, a lot of ginger women are genuinely bloody gorgeous. But when it comes to men and you specifically choose to look like that, you've got a big ginger pubic bush on the top of your head with a what looks like kind of Rolf Harris prison mustache, it's not a good look. It wasn't a good look in the 80s, it's not a good look now, so just don't do it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking, you all look beautiful, ginger pube headed men. Mm. Anyway, let's return to the post office and we will end the day. So then this is another sort of specific set of dialogue that we have to get now. Basically, our boss Steve's phoning. He's going to ask us to do a job while we're there. Uh, basically, we're just going to agree. This is for the workaholic achievement. Now, there are a couple of... Yep, just say, yeah, there's not much to do around here. Oh, this bit doesn't particularly matter. Uh, but there are a couple of achievements in the game where it's set in parts. So we have to make sure to do something first to get it a little bit later on. So... Just make sure to save regularly, just in case. Um, uh, ah, ha, ha. Just say, nice one, Steve, when do you need the feedback? Rather than, nice one, Steve, you're an absolute asshat. And I'm only laughing because I want to get inside you so I can get a goddamn promotion. Uh, jokes like that. Just I'm allowed now, I'm a dad, so I can't do it. Say, yep, can't miss. Um, but that's not even dad joke level. That is, that is just... Chopping your own bell end off level. That's just not a thing. Steve, why are you the way you are? Just give me a pay rise and shut up and then we're good to go. Right, so like I said, <laughs> that would be for the workaholic achievement. Again, we don't actually have to do anything. Um, you can choose whatever one you want. I chose the top option so we can speak to Angie about it. Um, but basically, when we are back at home tomorrow night, that is where we can get the option here to do all the contracty, boring bullcrap. So, you don't have to go out with your, your way to do anything, so just enjoy your night off while everyone just gets us to work, even though we're supposed to be on vacation. But, you know, up your guts and all that. And a note from Tess. Hey, Em. Hope you're doing well. Steve told me you'd want to read through this monstrosity. Not sure if you really said that, but have a great time there anyways. Take care. Tess. So then, welcome to day four. Now, what we're actually going to be doing, first of all, is going for another missable achievement. Um, I believe this one is missable because you, if you don't know it's there, you can actually just go through the game. And not actually know it's there. So what we're going to do is head to Bear Creek. So we're going to go down to the woods and fast travel there. Basically, this is just for climbing up on top of the Watchtower. Um, but now we're on to the 4th of September. We're actually going to, to start the Movie Carrier Achievement as well, which is spread over three days. And it all begins with uh, talking to Angie. But go to the left here. It's a sort of a beaten off track. You can see the hiking trail sign there. So that is... That indicates that we are on the way up. So just follow the long track around for now.
Man, I'm surprised our rusty old truck has made it up here. Um, but the watchtower, this is where we need to go, and we need to climb all the way up to the top to get the tower watcher achievement. Very complicated stuff, I know, it's, I bet it's boggled your brain. You're going to need to play a, a nice easy rat -a -like -a game now, just to, um, you know, chill out with, I suppose, ain't you? But just keep climbing, keep climbing, and that is when the achievement should unlock. So they are, so it's that one, and with the church earlier on, they are the only two things that we needed to find. Because, of course, there's no collectibles or anything like that. So they were the two things that we needed to find. So the rest now, the rest of the missable ones, are basically for doing certain things for certain people. Uh, they're basically side quests without coming up as side quests, so they can be missable. Um... But again, so like I said, the only thing that we need to worry ourselves about now with an achievement is the movie carrier achievement. And we will be speaking to Angie in the Flick the Bean Shack a little bit later on. So for now, just follow along, go about your daily business, deliver the mail, speak to the teddy bear lumberjack who's all man and all teddy bear. Or half man, half bear pig. There's a face I remember. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Hey there. More paperwork with my name on it? Well, take a look for yourself. Thanks. Oh, it gets worse every day. More bullcrap? Can you believe it? I've been taking care of this lakeside for years. And now they're gonna bulldoze it and build apartments. Oh, that's a shame. I'd hate to see the place I grew up ruined by an apartment building. What? You grew up here? Yes, my father was the mailman before me. Mr. Weiss? Ah, oh, so you're the prodigy he's always talking about. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. But tell me about that paperwork. They say you can file an official objection, but I'm not a great match with bureaucracy. I'd rather get the chainsaw and cut down town hall. Nothing a chainsaw can't handle. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a nice thought, though. Well... Maybe I can help out. I'm better with paper than chainsaws. Would you? Awesome. I'll think about it. Have a great day. Bye, Robert. Hey, wait up. I'm done thinking about it. Maybe you'd want to go through all the files... together? Tomorrow afternoon? At most, food and drinks on me. Mmm, sure. Who can say no to food and drinks at Moe's? Awesome. I'll see you there then. I'll bring all the paperwork. Okay. Bye. And there was the first thing that I just did that I potentially made a mistake, which probably adds a little bit more onto the game as well. Robert just asked us for food and drinks. And we said, yeah, sure, why not? And that is because I'm a fat, muscly bastard who just automatically looked at food and went, yeah, god yeah. Um, so again, I'm not sure how much time it actually saves, but if you wanted to refuse that, you can. Um, but if you want to just follow along with the video anyway as well, that's also fine. So now what we're going to do is actually get the cat lover achievement now. So heading back, of course, to the main street. We are going to... Oh, deliver this package first. <laughs> Screw it while it's on the way. You might as well deliver the package. And then we'll go back to the bait shop. Go see... Mm, Mr. Murphy. Okay. Grab the cat and head back to Millie Mildred. Oh, that's heavier than I thought. Alright, I'll leave it on the doorstep.
there, Mr. Mackey. How's Mortimer? Oh, good day, Meredith. Mort's fine, as I expected. It was just a little indigestion. Good night's rest and a bit of lake trout in the morning has done the little critter a world of good. Excellent. Miss Jenkins will be pleased. Let me take him off your hands. All right. Bye, Mort. Anything else, Miss Weiss? Enjoying yourself so far? I'm having fun. Yes. Well, that's good. I'm guessing I'll see you around a lot more, Miss Weiss. For sure, Mr. Mackey. Have a nice day. So he had a fish and then he was better. Right, okay, well, that went well. So we're heading back to Main Street now. Again, I do this quite often. This is literally just to save a little bit more time. Trying to save as much time where we can. Obviously, this is just an achievement. This is more of an achievement guide than just a full gameplay walkthrough, of course. So we just want to be getting the full 1,000 as quickly as possible. Anyway, we're heading back to Mildred's Cookies. Nah, it doesn't doesn't have the same ring to it as Millie's Cookies. Although old people are generally better bakers, I don't know why that's a thing, but it's a thing. So heading back to Mildred, she's gonna say. Because that's apparently how she talks. And the cat lover achievement will unlock. Mortimer! Oh, meet me! You're good as new! Yeah, Mr. Mackey did say not to feed him cupcakes. Hmm, I suppose he's right. It's, it's just that he likes them so much. Don't you, Mortimer? Anyway, thank you so much, Meredith. My pleasure. See you, Miss Jenkins. Call me Mildred, dear. Say goodbye to Meredith Mortimer. Yeah. Interesting. So now we're just carrying on with the rest of the day, but the next stop we're heading to is the old flicking of the Beanen Shacken. Now, like I've mentioned twice already, I don't know if you uh, noticed that, uh, she she does still need a package. Um, but this is the start of the movie Carrier. Now, the basic idea of it is, because of course this is a town full of about 15 people, business is obviously slow because... You know, there's 15 people and there's like one teenager here and like two kids. There's not a lot you can get with opening a rip-off blockbuster here. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to get a little flirty, baby. Oh yeah. And what's, uh, she's basically going to say, well, I've got a movie idea. I've got a little idea. Do you want to hear it? And just say yes. So every time she says about... Um, I've got an idea, blah, 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 just be all positive, say yes, and then just invite her over to a house, or Angie invites herself over to our house. 
But make sure then that she is coming over to our house. We're starting to get a little flangy in the Angie, a little bit flirtatious in the pangy. Beat Lana Turner's smoldering intensity. Yeah, she's great in it. I'm so glad you liked it. Most of the people here don't really appreciate the art of classic cinema. They just want to see Police Academy again. <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. Pretty lonely being the only movie buff around. Well, Keep feeding my VCR and I'll be up to speed in no time. Will do. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you. You know, it's good to see you. That's nice to hear. Because I have a sneaky little plan. Oh, we're whispering now? I want you to meet me, say, at Five today. What? Like a date? <laughs> well, more like a business proposal. You in? All right. I'm in. Hurrah! I'll see you this afternoon. Wait, where are we meeting up? Your place? It's 102 New Street, right? Inviting yourself over? That's quite impertinent. Well, hey, do you want to know my sneaky little plan or not? Oh, well. It's settled then. See you at five, partner. Hmm, that's going to happen a little bit later on, a bit of red wine, a bit of, uh, I don't want anything else though, this is just wine chill and achievement hunting, okay? Gosh, you people and your dirty thoughts, this is just achievements and chill, nothing more. <laughs> anyway, so there's nothing really, there's not a lot else going on now to be honest, it's just a case of deliver the crap out of the packages and end the workday. At least I don't think, anyway. That's lighter than I thought. Hi Maureen! Hi hon! How are you doing this fine day? I'm fine, but how are you? You know, with the kitchen exploding? Oh that? <laughs> Nothing a fresh lick of paint and a mop couldn't fix. I didn't mean to scare you. 
Let's pick up where we left off, shall we? And one piece of blueberry pie. Ashley, one blueberry pie. Meredith Wise, back in Providence Oaks. How's life treating you, darling? Well, being back feels a bit strange. I delivered a package to Kay at her house earlier. Yes, yeah, she told me. How did that go for you? I think I put my foot in it, to tell you the truth. I can imagine it can be a lot to take in for the both of you, especially after being away for so long. Then again, there are some things that never change, right? Well, this diner sure did. Glad you noticed. I like what you did with the place. Yeah, I decided it was time for a change. Didn't feel the same after my stand died. World keeps turning. Gotta keep moving along with it, right? Oh my gosh, Maureen, Stan died? I'm so sorry, I, I had no idea. Thank you, darling. But it's really okay. It's been 10 years already. 10 and a half, almost. Oh, boy, did I love that man. Oh, we'd been married for so long. It hit me like a brick. But after a while, I decided that sadness wasn't the only emotion I was allowed to have. That's not what Stan would have wanted either. That's... Really inspiring. Thank you, hon. I do appreciate that. Anyway, you have to get back up. So I did. For me, but also for Kay. She took her uncle's death pretty hard. I can imagine that. <sighs> Sorry for dumping all that on you like that, darling. Gosh, <laughs> look at your face. I'm a bit surprised you didn't know. Didn't your parents tell you about it? Or Kay? They might have. I've been so involved in work. Ah, uh, it's okay, hon. I honestly don't give a hoot about any blame game. We all have our lives to live, but Kay's been through a lot. Uh, nursed her uncle through his illness, helping me out. I think seeing you again shook her up a little, is all. She must have missed you during those days. I can imagine. It was good to see her again. I've missed her too. Then, it sounds like you know what to do. Listen, Meredith. Time marches on. And eventually, you realize it's marching across your face. Life's too short. That's exactly why I decided this place could do with a repurpose after Stan passed. Fresh start. It's been Moe's Diner ever since. And believe it or not, business is better than ever. That's great to hear, Maureen. Congratulations. Why, thank you kindly. And listen, you check in with me and Kay again soon, you hear? Don't forget about what's important in life. <laughs> Says the woman who forgot my blueberry pie. What the? Ashley? What happened to that pie? I'm so sorry, honey. I swear that kid... <laughs> it's okay, Maureen. I have a feeling I'll be back soon anyway. Huh? I'll hold you to that. You bet. Bye, Maureen.
That's the last of them. So, the Postman jokes are going to start coming along, the fantastic Postman jokes, uh, very shortly, because, you know, might as well fill a couple of silences here and there, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so, obviously, depending on who you've spoke to and what you've decided to do after you end the workday, you'll either get these cutscenes, where, of course, we definitely need this one, so just as long as we've got this one with Angie, we are on the right track uh, in terms of the movie achievement. Uh, but yeah, after every workday, if you've decided to do something with someone, you actually don't have to do anything. It's all just an unskippable dialogue, and this is what will always happen. <laughs> Brian. Brian. Monty Python's life of Brian. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't really look the part of a computer nerd, either. I'll take that as a compliment. Thanks. Well... I do kind of have a thing for nerds, but I'm also a sucker for someone in uniform, so I guess you tick multiple boxes. <laughs> so, any particular reason you're not at the nerd factory anymore? Let's just say I needed a change of scenery. Okay, well, I totally get wanting something different, anyway. I used to live in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Then, yeah. Providence Oaks is pretty different. <laughs> sure is. It's quieter for one thing, slower for another. Yeah, those are the two things I like best about it. Me too, I think. It took some getting used to. So tell me about this plan of yours. Is the suitcase part of it? Oh, right. It's simple. I want you to distribute movies all over Providence Oaks. You mean, for free? Yeah. You know the town, you're starting to know the people. Not all of them have VCRs yet, but that's why God invented movie boxes. And by God, I mean electronics companies. Look, it's a VCR in a box, and it's portable too, so you can take it to anyone. Wow, this is the future of entertainment. I've made a list of potential customers and the movies I think they'll like. All you have to do is just deliver the movie box with a movie of their choice. Then you go and pick it back up once they've watched it. Okay, but what's the revenue model here? Oh, you! Not everything is about money. It's about promoting the store. Which, I guess, is ultimately about money. Here, I'll give you these two to start. These are for Lori. You know her, right? Yes, I've met her during my rounds before. Yes, good. I have these two for her. The Love Bug and... A Nightmare on Elm Street. This one is about murders in a bathtub, right? Well, not exactly. You'll just have to watch it. But not before Lori gets a chance. I think she'll love it. After Lori gives back the box, I have a couple movies planned for Burt Mackey. They are Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. And that's it for now. If you're in, that is. So, you in? All right. These addresses seem to be on my route anyway. I'm in. All right. Thanks a bunch, babe. Now, do you have any more of this great coffee? Actually, I really need to head back. Oh, what's the rush? I left the store unattended. Better get back. <laughs> I guess time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I guess so. Bye, babe. Well, Angie, if you like nerds, huh, baby, I'm all nerd. I mean, have I got some more womanly? Hey, baby, I'm all nerd. No, no, that just sounded like I've got no nutsacks. Okay, so here we go. Phone's ringing. We're going to have another chat with our alcoholic dad. Yeah. 
is. <laughs> Talk to mom, huh? But yeah, can't complain. How about you? Do you like my job? I'm starting to love it. Being on the road, the freedom, the people. That's great to hear. Frank's quite the character, huh? Frank's quite the character indeed. Is he married? Frank married? Yes, to baseball. He places a bet every now and then. Nothing too serious. And what about Mildred Jenkins? Mildred likes to talk a lot. I sometimes postpone delivering her mail until she and her cats can't ambush me. Speaking of ambushes, your mom is telling me to hurry up. We're going to a movie. Okay, Dad, don't keep her waiting. What movie? Uh, stand by me. Uh, about four Oregon boys in the 50s. Right up my alley. Sounds good. Say hi to Mom for me. Will do. Bye, Meredith. So when this conversation is finally over, now we're going to get another couple of options. Now remember we need to make sure to choose the work on the added 87 material. Because of course this is for the workaholic achievement, so make sure to choose that option. So instead of having a break and a vacation, we are doing double the work, which... Well, that's not a vacation for me, you want to get... If you're away from work, you don't want to even be thinking of that shit in place. So, Friday the September of the 5th, so we're going to be getting one achievement, and we're also going to be starting um, a new achievement, the Shutterbug achievement, and carrying on with the Movie Carrier one as well. So a couple of things we're going to need to be doing before slapping out the old drum and bass and the old titty winkles. Uh, I'm, I, I just meant the packages and mail, of course. So, head directly to the general store, which is more or less opposite. And we're going to have a... Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, obviously, bring the package first, which is always handy if you're delivering packages. So basically, as we start talking to the ever-happy Nancy, she's going to be talking about um, a photographer, and she's obviously not happy with it, because she looks just as miserable as anything in life. But what we're going to say is, I'd love to. Uh, so basically, we need to be grabbing the camera off Nancy now. So anytime there's a dialogue option, we need to be saying, like, oh, I'd love to do... Yeah, there we go. So that's pretty nice, actually. I love photography. And the next couple of dialogue options, just make sure that you're basically saying, yes, I'm very happy, I love photography, and all that um, up your guts. So just don't be negative with this bit, and Nancy's going to give us our camera. Photographs, knock yourself out. They want me to practice with the mini lab before the service is officially offered. They sent me a practice kit with the camera and film. Really? I'd love to take pictures. The surroundings here are wonderful. Well, here you go, and good luck. Take some pictures and then return it to me. Have a nice day, ma'am. And so what we're going to do then, we're just going to um, press the Y button to get the camera out. And we're just going to get all the pictures out of the way now. So there are 12, as you can just see behind the Welsh Hunter sign there. Um, there are 12 pictures that we ne basically need to uh, get the camera roll full. So just take a picture of absolutely everything. I'm just trying to go as random as I can, um, but it literally doesn't matter. You can just take a picture of the same 12 pieces of crap. Uh, as long as all, as soon as you do all 12, um, Meredith's going to put the camera away, and then we'll come back to Nancy uh, tomorrow. So just fill up the camera roll, and everyone's a happy.
And with that one done, then we can just carry on. So we got part one out of Shutterbug out of the way. So like, we don't need to worry about that now until tomorrow. Um, but now what we're going to do, um, we need to deliver the movie box to Laurie, which is part of the side quest anyway. Um, for the movie carry achievements. That is where we're heading next. So nip to garage, give Laurie to uh, movie box and to uh, yeah. I didn't bring the package. By the way, it really doesn't matter what movie gets picked or anything, just as long as one movie is chosen. So, again, you can do any dialogue option that you want right now. Flick Shack asked me to deliver some movie boxes. She also asked me to deliver some to you. Oh, tight. What are the options? Let me see. A love bug or a nightmare on Elm Street. You'll probably love that bug. I'm almost 16, Miss W. That's a kid's movie. Well, I watched it when I was in college. So you're saying it's an ancient kid's movie. You just don't understand the classics. So you'll pick A Nightmare on Elm Street? Give me the love bug. I thought you didn't want that one. Ugh, I don't. But if my parents catch me watching Elm Street, they'll ground me for a week. I wish they'd just take a chill pill and see that I'm basically an adult. I fix cars. Aw, oh, no, that's too bad, Lori. Maybe you can watch it at a friend's house instead. No, I'm homeschooled. There aren't many teenagers here, as you may have noticed. So I don't really have any friends to watch it with. So it's a love bug for me. Tell you what, take the love bug now and we'll watch the horror movie at my place. Would Sunday work for you? What? Really? Yes, it would. That'd be wicked, Miss W. Of course. I'm always in for a good fright. So, see you Sunday? Totally. Oh, typical teenagers going, her, that film's going to be crap. Trust me, when you're an adult, you will love all those types of Disney films and crap. So, what we're going to do now is actually get what could be a potentially random achievement. But I think this guy is always here at Reynolds Farm um, on this day in the rain. So, we're going to head all the way to the right there to Reynolds Farm. Now, I'd already unlocked the um, fast travel point. Hopefully, you have as well at this point. Because um, I actually went looking for him on other days, but he was nowhere to be found. So on this particular day, Friday the 5th of September, in the rain, we're going to head to the farm. And you can see him already there on the left. Basically, he's a metal detectorist. And to get this missable achievement, we need to speak to him. That's all we need to do is talk to him. But I think there's only a handful of spawns that he's actually at on particular days. Now, I went through this twice, and I seen this guy at this exact same location on the exact same day every time. So I think he's always here on this particular day. Um, any other days, I think he's just walking around aimlessly and randomly. So you might bump into him um, sooner than me. If you do, of course, remember to talk to him. But... He should always be here on Friday the 5th of September, so I'm hoping that he is for you guys as well. So again, all you need to do is just talk to him, have a little conversation, and that is where the achievement will unlock. But of course, we need to get this before finishing the game, otherwise that's a pain in the ass. It, you're looking at about an hour and a half just to get back to this point. <laughs> no worries, it's safe with me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to get back to it now. I need to be at our MDC later. A metal detectorist club. Nice. A metal detecting club. 
we compare finds, we discuss the hobby. Sometimes our club president gives a talk on things like buttons. Buttons? I think I'd wait for the one on huge gold nuggets. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, nice meeting you. It was nice to meet you too. Good luck. And there we go then. So, again, a lot of other people have said they've seen him walking around along dirt roads and here, there and everywhere. But if you don't want to worry about it, I did try to run him over, but nothing happened. <laughs> Sorry, And. Uh, but yeah, so if you were wanted a sort of surefire way rather than wandering around, wondering where the hell to get him, uh, he should always be there on this date at this time. So, um, there we go. So before heading off, we are going to speak to... Jack Reynolds, who is the world famous, or the Providence Oaks famous, radio DJ and farmer. Wow! Where's the package? Hello, sir. I reckon that's a parcel with my name on it. I reckon your name is Jack Reynolds? Indeed I am. And I reckon you're the new postal worker. I reckon you could say that. Well, thank you much. New around here, I reckon. People call me JR. I'm a farmer and DJ. I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you. DJ and farmer? That's a rare combo. Indeed it is. But it's a nice distraction from farming. I've uh, seen better times. I had some spare time and a room in the shed, so I figured, why not? About your playlist. It's really nice. Thanks, but I really need to add more songs. But I'm in the middle of a potato harvest. Don't have much time. Hey, listen, postal worker Meredith, I need to get back to work. Can you do me a favor and give this envelope to Frank? Sure. No problem. Thank you so much. Okay, delivery for the diner. Hey, Meredith. Sure, just uh, put it on the counter, would you? Okay, about the other day. What about it? <sighs> I really put my foot in it. Maybe it wasn't the best time for that conversation. <sighs> Maybe not. Yeah. So... Talk to Maureen. Let me guess. You got a piece of Maureen's wisdom too, eh? Why doesn't that surprise me? That explains why she wanted me to take over today's shift, then. She told me about Uncle Stan. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It was a long time ago, but I appreciate it. It's not the same without him. I'm sorry I wasn't there. For you and Maureen. That's kind of you to say, Meredith. I mean, I didn't contact you about it at the time, but then again, I had kind of given up by then. I guess everyone has their own things to deal with. Even me. I get it. There's always a reason for things to go the way they do.
Even so, it never seems to be the right reason. Time marches on. What did Maureen always say about that again? One day you realize it's, it's marching, marching across, across your across face. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mo. Some things never change. You say that like it's a good thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So this encounter seemed a little less awkward. Thank God for that. So, uh, why? Thank you. Um, so we've only got a couple more uh, letters and packages to deliver now, which will be in the main town. So we've got the everything for the achievements that we can do. We have done for this day. Now, this is basically, I think, the busiest day for it. Oh, hello. Are you two lesbian lovers, or are you two just completely looks like the exact same, which a lot of the AI does in this game, to be honest. Um, but anyway, that's, that's what we're going to do now, then. We're just going to head back to the main town, do some delivering. Uh, by the way, while I've got you here, can anyone tell me, what is the secret to telling a good postman joke? It's all in the delivery. Ha! Ah! <laughs> Here's your mail. Interesting. That's the last of them. Right, so that is that day done. Uh, we basically, we're gonna head back to the post office now to end the day. Now remember we accepted Robert's dinner invitation earlier, that's what's gonna happen now. If you didn't, um, I assume you're just going to go back to the house and do a little bit of um, ringing of the phone call with your ma and your pa. So, 
Um, hopefully you said no. Sorry, Robert. Hopefully you said no, and then you can just pause the video or just <laughs> catch up on the video to where you are. Um, again, like I said, kind of interesting some of these things, um, but you really don't have to do it if you don't want to. I'm just a nice person, and I just say yes to everything. Not not everything, mind. So don't even think about putting requests for weird things down. Thank you. No physical harm, thankfully. The roof. Yes, I promise to take a look at it. Uh, let me check out the damage real quick. Be right back. Thanks, darling. Hmm. Sure is one of the good ones right there. He seems very nice, but I haven't actually talked to him longer than ten minutes. What's time got to do with anything? You know what you want when you see it, hon. Oh, Maureen, please. What do you take me for? For a human being, of course. Don't go telling me city life turned you into a robot now. I don't buy it for a second. Anyway, let me show you to my nicest table. I hear the sun hits your face in all the right places here. Okay, so what you're saying is there's a couple of things we can do, but no chainsaws. Definitely no chainsaws, for the moment. It's just that the remaining options will take time, effort, and patience. Well, that's one out of three for me. Can I get you lovebirds? Anything else? Maureen, really? I could always decide not to fix your roof today, you know? Don't worry, Robert. I know Maureen. I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> I could go for a glass of red wine, Maureen. Gotcha, hun. Robert? The same for me, please. Sure thing. Back in a jiff. Ashley! Did we get that wine order in last week? They what? Glad we're finally done for today. But there's more to come. I'm sure you'll do fine. Thanks, but you don't sound very convincing. To be honest, you probably need some extra help. Is that an offer? Yeah, sure. Okay, you two hard-working individuals, here you go. Thanks, Maureen. Cheers. So, how's life in PO so far? It's only been a week, but... So far, so good. Yeah, I've been here a bit longer. Time sure does fly. When you're having fun? Yeah, uh, look, Meredith, I'm sorry. I really better get started on fixing that roof. It's just, uh, that's quite a big job. While it's still light out and all, you know. So, thanks so much for your help. I mean, I really do appreciate it. Drive home safe. Uh, I'll see you around town. So, yeah, I'll see you. Everything okay over here? Yeah, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Now, with a name like Walter Morgan, you already can tell what kind of person this is where he has his cat shoved so far up his anal glands that he does not know how to smile. I don't know if that's a saying or not, but, well, it is now. I'm taking it. I'm copywriting that. <laughs> anyway, so, ooh, things go down in the post office. You may get new way. Eh? Uh, but we are going to talk to Steve once again. This bit really just cringes me out for some reason, and you'll see, I hope you'll know exactly what I mean now. Move our chances of securing a monster deal. You're welcome, Steve. A monster deal? It's a monster deal. The big retailer, big money, big prizes. A monster deal? That is so awesome! Big money, big prizes. Ooh, I need to calm down, too. <laughs> well, yes. Calmness is needed. Eyes on the prize. The next steps are me going to meet up with them this week. Discuss terms. Eye of the tiger. Go get him, Steve. Thanks, Meredith. 
Speak soon. No, sorry, it wasn't it wasn't that bit. Never mind. It still cringes me out, but it wasn't that particular bit. We'll see next time. So again, we're either watching TV or reading a book. Again, we sadly can't skip any of this, so you know, just enjoy, see if there's anything that you li like about the house. I guess. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Shulton Brown. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed, right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstaben estate. She tumbled upside down, hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? Good morning, Meredith. There's an envelope today with an incomplete address on it. It only says Mickey and June, Lake Campground, Providence Oaks. Do you think you can find that? Yeah, I think I know where that is. All right, have a great day. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Frank, I wanted to ask you something. I will not babysit Mildred's cats. <laughs> no, it's about something else. What's in those envelopes for you? Oh, that's just for stamps. Saves them the hassle of driving up here. Hey, I gotta get back to work. Catch you later. So then, as we begin the new day, the first thing we're going to be doing is heading straight across the street to the old general store. And we are going to be delivering the camera. Now, you don't, you can, you don't actually have to do it now if you don't want. Um, you can do it in a few days. Just make sure not to give Nancy the camera on the very final day because she needs at least a day to process the photos and that's how you get the achievement. So you can actually still miss this. Um, but basically talk to Nancy, see that your quest has been completed. It's just easier to get it out of the way now. And um, Now I don't know if this is just a glitch or whatever for me, but she will... Sorry, no, this is another wrong bit. Sorry. So, we've just given the camera back, and we need to come back on the next working day. So, again, don't have to give it back now. If you don't want to, you can wait a day or two, but probably just best to get it out of the way now. And love it! So, that one, so that's the uh, photos being developed, so we haven't got anything to do with that now. So, what we're going to do is have a nice time, have a little drive around, deliver some mail, enjoy the same two songs over and over again. Still catchy as balls, man. <laughs> Actually, one more thing we do need to be grabbing is the movie box from Laurie. Um, so that's where we're just heading now. Grab that, and then we can go back, I believe, to the old flicking bean shop. Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. You don't have to hide it from me, Lori. You can say you loved it. I guess it wasn't bad. It was really fun, actually. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. See you Sunday. See, I know what people like. Women will like what I tell them to like. Quote from Homer Simpson, 
By the way, that's not just that. That's not me being a pig right there. That is a Homer Simpson quote, honestly. So we're just going to head back to Main Street. We are, of course, going to the uh, Flick the Bean Shack, dropping off the movie box. And then that is where we can actually just carry on with the rest of the day's mail. Now, to me, this seems quite uh, unrealistic because you've got no dogs trying to bite the crap out of your ankles. Um, we're not wearing shorts because, as we all know, I don't know if it's... I don't know if American postmen and women are the same, but in Britain, postmen and women always wear shorts. Come rain, come shine, come snow and ice, shorts is the way forward for the British postman woman anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, Angie's a bit bitchy right here anyway, so... Uh, there's no uh, specific dialogue options you can choose, you can choose anything you want for the time being. She seemed positive. I think this might actually work. Hmm, well, it better. It will. I'm sure it will. I'm sorry, it's just that business is slow and... Well, I don't really want to talk about it. Could you just pick up the two new movies and deliver them, please? Hmm. Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. I'm on it. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Mm-hmm. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Wow, Angie, who pooped in your coffee this morning, huh? Who took a piss in your Rice Krispies, eh? Yeah. Anyway, maybe she didn't um, follow her own shop's advice and flick the bean shack enough. I, d I don't know. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing, we've got the next movie box. We need to be going back to the bait shop. Uh, if you remember where we um, gave Mortimer the cat to Mr. Mackey, okay? Sorry, I don't know why I do that with, with different voices and stuff, but, uh, ah, screw Ruin it. You only live once, you might as well have a laugh doing it, right? Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. But, uh, yeah, so like I said, we're heading to the bait shop. Now, again, the movie choice doesn't matter. You can either give him Jaws or... Um, whatever the hell the other one was. Cannot remember. So, it doesn't matter what movie you choose. It's literally just a case of dropping it off, giving him a movie, and then we can actually go and do all the mail. Sorry, I know I've said that twice, but we actually can after this bit. I've got this movie box for you. Leave it on the porch of the cabin, could you? I need to know if you prefer a war movie or a shark movie. Huh? Movies? Uh, just pick something. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. Jaws it is. Have a nice day. So there we go, now we can head back to the main street and just start delivering all of the packages. There is nothing else that we need to attend to right now, so we are all good. So just enjoy the music and just enjoy the same town over and over and over again. Not boring, of course. Answer.
leave it on the doorstep. Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, uh, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. Was I such bad company? No, no, not at all. I, I really enjoyed it. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. There's nothing wrong with a little weirdness. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. A dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? So, no news regarding those apartments? Nothing. Hallelujah. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wild card plan. Wild card plan? Wildcard plan. Yes. Also, highly confidential. Okay. Good luck with that. Thanks. So I always do this as well, by the way, with the fast travel points. Wherever the next package is, obviously just go to the closest fast travel point. Just so, you know... You're not wasting any more time. But speaking of uh, wasting time and coming up with corny crap, my, uh, <laughs> funnily enough, my postman friend gets really angry when I tell everyone what he does for a living. I call him a male escort. <laughs> And for whatever reason, we are delivering mail to a rock. That is not a house, that is a rock. Um, well, enjoy. Enjoy your mail, Rocky. I remember Dad telling me, Meredith, the picnic area is for the older kids. So then, we're going to be coming up now to this little campsite. Um, we're going to meet Mickey and June. Pretty much um, doped up and junked up on everything. You know, the typical... The typical... Um, well, you know, typical junkies, if you want to call them junkies. Hey, how are you? Hi there. We, we're actually brother and sister and got the eight fingers, but, uh, you know... 
I'm just joking, of course, not everyone is like that. <laughs> but they are going to come in extreme handy later on. Basically, the RV that they're living in, rem remember with the one ending, we actually need to leave the town in the RV. Now, this, these are the people that we actually get it from. Um, so, this bit's fine. Um, any dialogue option you want doesn't matter on this particular time. But the second time that we deliver the letter is when we start getting the ball rolling in terms of getting the RV and, you know, leaving town forever. <laughs> that kind of paper. We all know what kind of paper that is. And also, I don't know if you probably noticed as well, but you can obviously just shut a lot more conversations shorter by just saying, Oh, well, that's nice. Thanks. Gotta go. Or, you know, bye. Gotta run. Stuff like that. So... Again, not sure how much time you can save on that, but a couple of minutes each time probably um, adds up for a lot. Me, I'm just being nice, which I hate to be honest. I wish I wish I could just tell everyone to piss off, but uh, I'm not like that. I'm a nice guy, you know? So anyway, we've done our duty for the day. Now we can just head back to the post office. So nip back to Main Street, back to post office, and have a relaxing evening. teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree and I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go must dial M and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man. Anyway, I uh, didn't call about that obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or... Be now, again, here you can do what you want. Um, obviously, if you decide you're too busy, I'm not sure that you actually do anything on a Sunday and you might just go straight to Monday. Um, for me, again, being the nice guy that I was, I decided to actually meet Kay on the Sunday. Now, all that is, it's literally about about seven to eight minutes of just all dialogue options. So if you decide not to meet her, you can obviously just skip through that. I wish I'd bloody done that. But if you decide not to, of course, just skip for the video by another couple of minutes and get to the next point. Real life. So here we are then, it is Sunday, this isn't a working day, but because we decided to meet Kay, of course, it's going to be another like 7-8 minutes of dialogue, so if you just want to, if you haven't decided to meet Kay and you skip this bit, anyway, uh, you can obviously just skip forward the video by 5, 6, however many minutes it is, and um, we can just nip to Monday. Uh, there's, again, there's nothing that you're missing, no achievements to be missed, nothing, they literally just reminisce and be like, 
Oh my god, yeah, uh, blah blah blah. I'm a, I just talk and just so you can just pick what you want. Kind of wishing I didn't meet Kay. No, no offense. Hey there. Good to see you. <laughs> so glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here? It sure is. Oh, that view gets me every time. <laughs> Sounds like you're starting to remember what's great about P.O. Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh, yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan? And they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail. In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was! Oh man, what? I don't remember any of that! <laughs> I bet you don't. I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. On the whole, it's been really good. And the company I work for has a major break coming up, so that's interesting. Oh, that sounds great. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. It certainly is something to think about. I can imagine Providence Oak seems boring by comparison. Well... Maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? I'm glad we can have these adult conversations now. Ooh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? Did you end up going to college? Yeah, uh, about that. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing, make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. That sounds exciting. Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music, but I just couldn't let them down. So I stayed, helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. I can't imagine what it must have been like to make that choice. I see where you're going, but honestly, I count myself lucky in a way. It gave me time to assess. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. And now you still work at the diner? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan. But I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. They basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, 
Those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) So, yeah, it's been tough. But looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. I'm so sorry I wasn't there. I don't want you to feel sorry. We all have our own lives to live, right? I mean, I guess you could have done more to keep in touch. You were really kind of a turd in that respect, I have to tell you. But that's life, right? It's in the past. I'm just glad you're here, right now, looking at the lake with me. It's good to know it's never too late to make new memories. Amen to that. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? (sighs) So, ready to descend to the world below? Yeah, seems like it's time. Come on, then. So, that genuinely was about eight minutes, so thank God that's done. Right, Stevie Boy is going to be phoning us again. Mate, I'm on holidays. Go and shove a... Dribble down your pee hole. Okay? And if he calls it Monster Deal one more time, I, I'm genuinely going to take a dump on his head. I am. I'm going to find Steve and I'm going to poop on his head. I don't care. So, again, it's just one of those conversations, though, that he's going to be all like, oh, blah, 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 and we're basically just going to accept another job for... Uh, uh, cringe. Mama, ma monster deal. Oh, I just, I hate Steve so much. So anyway, he basically wants us to do something. We're just going to say yes again and stop talking to him. Eighty-seven, two hundred and fifty thousand. Multiply that by like thirty-five bucks. What? That's millions of dollars of revenue. Millions, and and it's just the start. Listen, I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line. Okay? Gotcha, Steve. Don't worry about it. Awesome. I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing. Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You're welcome. I'm never going to sleep again. Ha! Huh, maybe you shouldn't have watched the movie. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16, and yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but it's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Oaks, and I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. But what do you want to do after school, then? I don't know. My parents want me to work in Dad's shop, but I don't think I want that. And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh, well, maybe. I think... Maybe once you're done with school, you can start traveling. Go out and see the world, like you said you wanted. Meet new people, do new things, Be a free spirit. I think that could be cool too. But I'd have to get my license first. And a car. But I guess I can save up money while I'm working for my dad anyway. And I've always wanted to see the Smithsonian Museum. Oh, oh, or Sequoia National Park in Cali. See, plenty of stuff just waiting out there for you to come and visit. You have two years left of high school, more than enough time to get your license and save up for a car. You're right, Meredith. Thank you. 
also for talking to me and stuff. You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later! No, I'm not sure if doing that with Laurie was um, unmissable or not, but uh, there we go. So we watched the film with her anyway. So we've got Steve's parcel, the little rat bag. Um, and we're going to have that, that Walter guy that decided to phone us. He's going to be popping up with his ever-present cat-up-his-ass attitude. Is that it actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Again, any dialogue options here, you can pick and choose whatever the hell you want. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policy? God, I want to shave that wig off. To be honest, no. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase, it is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Oh, okay, sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here, but I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. If you look up the definition of integrity, it has my picture next to it. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? Yes. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? No. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. What's going to happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss White. I mean, come on, who takes their job this seriously? I mean, I bet, I, I kind of guess he's like the health and safety workers today, aren't they? Where, who, I mean, they, well, those guys take their job extremely seriously. Remember the days you used to ride on pump trucks and throw things in the air without worrying and, well, you can't do that no more, nope. So anyway, as we begin, we're going to go straight back to the general store and we're actually going to get the shutter bug achievement. Now, of course, this is Monday morning. We've given Nancy Sinatra the um, the camera. So now we just talk to her again. I managed to get the machine to work. Here are the pictures. And wow, wow, well, I love these photos that I obviously took. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to say thanks, even though uh, Nancy ruined my images. They're all blank, damn it. Um, so apparently we can pick out one of the pictures. Um, it makes no difference to the time on the video, so, or the time on the game, sorry. So you can uh, pick, just pick one and submit. There we go. Yeah, I wouldn't either, since they're all blank, to be honest, Nance. But there we go. So pick one, and let's go. Hmm. Okay. Put it in this envelope and write your name and address on the back. So, there we go. That should be the Shutterbug achievement. You should be unlocking that right now. And the next thing we're going to do is go and get uh, Mr. Mackey's uh, movie box, okay? Uh, from the bait shop. Mm, bait shop's bad, okay? But there it is. So, we need to pick up the movie box and then we also need to bring that back to Angie, so now here's another one. I scared the postman today by going to the door completely naked. Now I'm not sure what scared him more. I don't know if it was my naked body or the fact I knew where he lived. <laughs> oh God damn it! Who put that tree there?
there, Meredith. I suppose you've come to pick up that VCR thing you dropped off earlier. The movie box? Yes. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, I did. It took some figuring out how to hook it up to my old TV set, but I got it to work. Good watch. Shark looked a bit fake, though. I saw it in the theater at the time. Pretty exciting. So anyway, Angie over at the Flick Shack hopes this entices you to visit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe I'll drop in one day. Well, you gotta get it back to work. Hey, here's the pa See you around. So with Mr. Matthew McClane's uh, movie box, now we can go back to Angie. Okay, well that seems like the best thing to do. So head back to the main main street and go back to Angie, okay? Here's your movie box back. Oh, thanks so much, babe. Listen, I owe you an apology. Apology? For what? I was Kurt. Just plain Kurt. Now, if you just replace the N with the R right there, then you'd be more on the ballpark there, Angie. But of course, I'm just joking. Uh, so yeah, just being nice. Let's just move on now. We want to date. We want to date this chick, man. We're going to floyd. Floyd like hell. Slow. More than slow. I mean, the flick. Well, maybe you should turn it from the flick shot into a flick the bean shot. Anyway, what we're going to do now, we are basically, she's going to ask us to go on a date. Now, of course, what we're going to do is accept, and that is where we get the movie buffer achievement or movie carrier achievement, sorry. So, we're going to have a little bit more conversation. Now, it's very important to choose yes when Angela wants me to, well, Take off her glasses and shave her eyebrows. This job has. I get to take myself and a plus one to a free movie of my choice at the new cinema in Astoria. So it's up to you. You can say you mean like a date or wow, pretty cool perk. But uh, just make sure I just choose the top option anyway, just to be on the safe and sound. And then, ah, uh, yeah. Angie's eyebrows likes us. And I'd say I'd love to. I'm in. And this is where the movie carrier achievement should unlock, which is great because now, in terms of other achievements, there's not a lot on the rest of the days that we've actually got to do. Um, so now we can just basically slam through, deliver all the mail, and just just keep going again. Keep going. Oh, I see a bean to flick. There it is. It's a coffee bean. <laughs> Interesting. I asked my wife the other day, I'm stuck on a crossword clue. Overworked postman, can you help me? She said, sure, how many letters? I said, I'm guessing, too many? <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's shit.
Ooh, that's heavier than I thought. Answer. Interesting. I think we should have bought a razor with us this time. We're back to the motel where the ginger pube headed demon uh, resides. And I just just want to shave it all off. Ech. You are jerk off, man. Hello, sir? It's the mail. Excuse me, what's this all about? It's all about the mail. I'd appreciate it if parcels are not just dumped on the counter. I'd appreciate it if you'd act like a human being. You'd understand if you had any idea about what I'm trying to do here. Setting up a computer system to handle all the bookings is quite sophisticated. Okay, I'll be on my way then. So here we are then, we're now coming up to deliver the second letter um, for Mickey and June. Um, of course this is all to do with the RV, remember, and the ending achievement for leaving in the RV. Uh, Try to crash into them and see what would happen, but obviously nothing did, which is a shame. So this time, again, a lot of dialogue is going to happen, and what we need to do is just accept the uh, RV. So I'll uh, pop up in just a second. So for the time being, just pick any um, dialogue option you want. And that's called AIDS, honey. AIDS will give you a rough night. Fish in the RV. Did he have too much of the stuff that makes you feel funny? Well, actually, when I went outside this morning, there was this huge rotting lake trout right below our window. 
totally grossed me out. How does something like that end up there? Ew, disgusting. I may have... Oh, hold on, Mickey's gotta read this. <laughs> Mickey! Wake up, honey! Leave me alone, I'm still shit-faced. It's a letter from Damien. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Give me that. Looks like we won't be here much longer. Oh, really? Where are you going? We're going to Canada. We will be picked up this Thursday, early in the morning. Uh, so, you can say what you want there. I say what about the RV? That doesn't make a particular difference, but... The next dialogue option is the one that we need to ch uh, pick and pick carefully. So they're going to invite us over on Wednesday. Maybe a puffer too, you know. And obviously we're going to gorgeously accept this one. Oh, I was going for another word there, but uh, we're going to say, oh cool, yeah, why not? This is very important. We need to be at this rendezvous. So uh, as long as you said that, if not, if you've accidentally... Um, chosen the other option you will just have to sadly replay from an autosave or hopefully you uh, manually save it quite a lot uh, just reload your save but make sure that you've accepted the rendezvous and we will wait till then otherwise this day is done Hello? Hey, Meredith. How was your day at the office? Uh, I mean, mail truck. Oh, hey, Dad. Actually, it did start at the office. I was being interrogated. Interrogated? What? By whom? Walter Morgan, a higher up from the Post Service. He started asking questions about code of conduct and about Frank. Morgan, that walking corpse. He's always after Frank. What did you say? Nothing, basically. That's my girl. They'll never catch Frank anyways. He's always one step ahead of them. Listen, Mom's poking me. I guess we're not allowed to talk about work. Uh, here she comes. Bye, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Was Dad trying to get work stories out of you? Hi, Mom. Yep, he tried. And he succeeded. It was a weird day. Well, I'm changing the subject right now. Have you met that new guy at the hotel yet, Matt? Yeah, I met him the other day. What a jerk. Ugh, I agree. He's one of the reasons why I won't miss working at the hotel. Anyway, how's life in good old P.O.? It's nice. I met some interesting people. That's good to hear. Interesting people. Do you mean interesting, interesting, or just interesting? I think you could say interesting, interesting. <laughs> oh, honey, that's so nice to hear. It's been a while since you've met someone interesting. That's right. And now I'm changing the subject. Do you miss Providence Oaks? No, oh, Florida is fantastic. I think I might actually want to live here. The warmth of the sun, it's very easy to get used to. Oh, Dad is telling me to get back. Looks like the bar's open. Wonder what he's ordering this time. I'll get an Alabama Slammer. <laughs> Alabama what? Alabama Slammers, cheers! <laughs> This is fun. It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? You pick. You're the expert. That's exactly why I want you to choose. The choice of innocent eyes. Alright. Let's see. 
Big Trouble in Little China, Blue Velvet, or The Great Mouse Detective. All right, I'm ready to pick. The Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> Wouldn't have picked you for a Disney fan. Oh well, let's get in touch with our inner child. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, but it's a mouse. <laughs> How do they come up with this stuff? I don't know, but I had a blast. Aw, that mouse detective really brought out your inner child. You ever thought about having children, by the way? Wow, you just come right out asking the tough questions, don't you? I don't think it's that tough a question, but then I guess I knew pretty early on that it wasn't going to be in the cards for me. <laughs> so anyway, my parents' house is right down this road, as you well know. By process of elimination, I detect that we need to take a right here, dear Dawson. <laughs> I wish I loved anything half as much as you love movies. Next time, we'll do something in your area of expertise. You mean driving around in a mail truck? Sure. Park it anywhere around the lake and then just enjoy the sunset. I like the sound of next time. Oh, so things are getting a little steamy up in Meow. Oh, yeah, I'll give you a slip of the tongue, honey. Don't you worry about that. So, this is the awkward sort of first date bit where one person potentially wants it, and we're going to be like, let's have a cheeky cup of brew, mate. And uh, we'll have a cup of tea without the tea, please. And you know what? Kiss her. Because hell yeah. <laughs> Why the hell not? Why the hell not? Now, by the way, in terms of the ending with the RV, it doesn't matter if you go with someone or if you're on your own. Literally doesn't matter. Um, as long as you leave in the RV. So that is why we're doing these specific bits with Mickey and June to get the RV. But you just had a great night. Uh, we gave each other the slip of the tongue, and now we've woken up. F -f -f Fantastic! He was asking all sorts of questions. Also about you, Frank. God damn it! Can you believe that jerk? Are you in trouble, Frank? Trouble? <laughs> They're the ones who are in trouble. I gotta get back to it, Meredith. Have a great day. Oh, before I forget, that Robert Harris guy was here this morning, looking for you. He asked if you could drop by. He's working somewhere in the forest today. So then, as I said, the only missable achievement we've really got left now is the workaholic one, which is all to do when the work day is done. So we've done Shutterbug, Movie Carrier, all of that's out of the way now. So literally the only thing that we need to do... Um, is just do the work day. So now it's just a case of just cracking on and being a postwoman man. Which again is very realistic because we haven't had our ankles bitten off by a dog and we are still wearing some trousers. Not shorts. Well mannered and Did someone just call me well mannered? <laughs> I'll take it. Let's see if the weather will behave today. Hmm, I guess nobody's home.
Uh, we're going to flick the bean shack. Hey, we did a bit of flicking the bean shack last night. <laughs> uh, so don't worry about whatever you say to Angie is all good. Does not matter what you choose now because, of course, we've got the achievement. And we've also got um, <laughs> what we wanted as well, apparently. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you say. I'm still being nice to Angie, though, because, you know, could do a second date, couldn't we? You'd be nice. I think I'm starting to like you. A lot. And I'd like to ask you to be a little less awesome. It's distracting me. <laughs> no can do, Miss Weiss. Being awesome is my thing. Would you ask Rocky to stop boxing? <laughs> Touché. So anyway, what's on your mind? Seems I caught you in a rare moment of quiet contemplation. <sighs> yeah, uh, I just... You ever get the feeling you're not where you need to be? You feel that way about Providence Oaks? It's just that this whole Flick Shack adventure, I think it was the right idea at the wrong time. And in the wrong place? I think so, yeah. I think I'm just too different for this town. Plus, business hasn't really been booming. Ah, and here I was hoping our movie box project would turn things around. <laughs> it almost did. Don't think that it didn't help. That's what I mean with the wrong time. I'm sure video will be huge. But it isn't. Not yet. Not here, anyway. So you're leaving? Yeah. Yes, I am. Wow. I didn't realize until just now that I'd already made my mind up. But I guess I have. I'm leaving. Gosh, it feels so liberating to say. <sighs> You're welcome. How about you? Have you made your mind up yet? About your future, I mean? Yeah, I think I have. Well, whatever it is, hold that thought. I want to give it my full attention when you do decide. And right now, I really have to start organizing the grand closing of the Flick Shack. We hardly knew ye. I hear ya. I'll swing by later. Right then, so Angie appears to be leaving the bean behind. No more flicking the bean shack for her. So, let's just carry on then. We're going to have to take that as we, uh, as we get it. Now, you know what the postman said to me the other day? The postman said he'd hold my package till I got home. It was quite an uncomfortable walk. <laughs> yeah, but for me, I'd say that's pretty comfortable. Anyone can hold my package. That's <laughs> I'm comfortable. Leave it on the doorstep.
All right, I'll leave it on the doorstep. Here's your mail. It starts with P, finishes with, finishes with N, and has a hundred letters. It's a postman! Ah, 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 okay. I went down like a lead balloon. So let's go ahead and deliver this package to this random... Hey, what the hell is that thing right now? Now, that thing was bigger than this. Is it a chainsaw? Or is it something you stick in the wall and... Uh, well, goddamn. I don't know who's there. We're going to leave that on the doorstep. Probably see you on OnlyFans in about three hours or so. Hmm... Ah, what complete douchebaggery. I've literally just blocked my own path, so I've got to go all the way around now. Ugh. Well, Lucky Meredith has the biceps of a Tom Stoltman strongman, obviously. Look at that. 
Look at that 800 pound package you've got to deliver by yourself. Hi, Kay. Package for you. I thought I might as well give it to you now instead of, you know, waiting till you're home. Oh, thanks. That's super amazing. Thank you. Um, what is it? Oh my god. I'm so excited about this. Yay! I see. This is a guessing game. All right. Is it a... A new rocket? No, but that would totally make Grace's day, though. I should be able to craft something like that out of the cardboard packaging. Good idea. Okay. The suspense is killing me. Open it! Okay, you ready? It's actually a Yamaha DX7 synthesizer! Oh man, I am super stoked this arrived so soon! I got this amazing deal on it through the classifieds. This old guy was selling it. Apparently he had never really used it. I mean, what? How? Can you imagine owning something like this and not using it every moment you get? I mean, this synth is used everywhere these days, so I was like, yes, this is mine! <laughs> Sorry, I can get carried away about this kind of stuff. I know, you're doing that speeding up thing again. To be honest, you lost me around the time you opened the box. But if it works like a computer, sign me up. Computers, eh? Oh wait, are you a programmer? Because if you are, you should totally check out the Insonic Mirage. If you like sampling machines, you should totally try out programming. Oh man, I would love to. So much to do, so little time. Listen, Em, I totally owe you for lugging this around for me. Now, what will you have? It's on the house. Pie! I mean, I'd love some blueberry pie if you have it. Oh, I just sold the last slice. We're clean out. Anything else? I owe you? I owe you it is. Apparently, I have some baking to get started on now. But... Good to see you, and thanks again. No problem. Have fun with your synthesizer. Yes, thanks. All right, so we have delivered all the packages. Sadly, we actually have to do the side quest to move the story on as well. So we're having to nip back to Woods, speak to Robert, and then we can actually end the day. But it's again one heck of a pain in the booty snatch, man. Hey, Meredith, I'm up here. Hey, Robert. Wow, that's really high. What? I can't hear you. Should I come up as well? Sorry, I can't hear you. Maybe I should come down first. Can you hear me now? Hi, Meredith. Thanks for coming out here. This arborist job came up suddenly. Awesome. I'd love to try that sometime. It's great up there. I used to climb a lot. Still do, actually. But now I get paid for it, too. Anyways, I figured it would also be good for you to see where the apartments are planned. Ah, oh, okay. So, what now? Well, I want you to listen to my wild card plan. Tell me all about it. I've scheduled a recording session at a professional sound studio. Get out of here! Are we gonna do a tree version of We Are The World? Yes! I can do Bruce. We are the world. We are the children. That sounds great. I'll be... 
Cindy Lauper. Well, 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 let us realize all that a change can only come. Oh, yes. But no. Sorry. It'll be a radio message to get the people of Providence Oaks involved. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, probably better that way. Yeah, leave the singing to the pros. It'll be this afternoon, by the way, at Jack Reynolds' barn. Are you in? I could use an extra set of ears. A professional sound studio, huh? Okay, I'm in. Great. Meet me there after work. I gotta get back up in this tree now. See you later. Bye. Good luck up there. Thanks. We are the ones to make a brighter day. So let's start giving. This is the worst two week vacation ever. I'm having to work for everyone and I'm having to help people with their crap. Uh, once again, we're obviously just going to choose any dialogue options. Um, you know, the whole norm at the minute. So you just be your supportive self there. <clears throat> Fellow Providence Okians, I'm Robert Harris and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it. And give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Perfect. That's a wrap, folks. Back to work. Hold on. Hold on, Jack. Meredith, what do you think? Um, uh, fellow Providence Okians? Really? Sounds a bit weird, right? What do you suggest? How about... Lake lovers, listen up. Okay. Let's try that. Jack? Sure, Robert. Here we go in one, two, three, action! <clears throat> Lake lovers, listen up. I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it, and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Better? Yeah, that should do it. Okay, that's a wrap. Back to tater harvesting. Meredith? I'm gonna return the favor and help Jack out today. If you love birds want to spend more time together, she can come along too. Plenty of work to do. Jack, what the? Sure, I'll come along, but I'll leave the lovebird squabbling to you two. Right, let's go then. Okay, folks, hop on my tractor. It's time for the real show. Right, anyway, it's finally time to get the workaholic achievement. We're gonna have Steve and his just whole cringy persona uh, talk. And as soon as this conversation's done, uh, we're basically gonna have the option to either watch TV, read a book, or obviously we're gonna say we'll look at them tonight. So like I said, you'll have the options to watch TV, read a book, flick the bean shack, or um, do Steve's contracts, which of course, we're going to need to, and ordinarily, I mean, if this is in real life, so there we go, review Steve's contracts, make sure to choose that, and the achievement will unlock when it's finished, when the cutscene's finished. Again, ordinarily, if any one of our bosses was to say that, we would have told them where to shove a carrot, or something of similar tendency and descendancy. Again, that's not a word, I just made it up, but that's fine. But of course, you know, achievements, I said, the crap we do for achievements is ridiculous. Good morning, Mr. Morning. I need to inform you that your colleague Frank Coleman has been suspended. Frank? Suspended? Why? The only thing you need to know right now is that I will be filling his spot for the time being. Okay, sir. Have a nice day.
So then, this is just another day. Um, remember, this is the 10th of September, so we are going to be attending the rendezvous with Mickey in June. And that is where we're going to get the RV. So we'll pop back in a little bit when it comes to that point. Otherwise, you just, you go, girl. Deliver those letters. Oh, uh, yeah. We've only got a couple of days left, thank God. People love to browse the shop and then not buy anything. What's this? The Flick Shack has closed down and will not reopen. Any unreturned tapes can be dropped off before September 22nd. It has been a privilege to serve as Providence Oak's premier home cinema provider. Thank you for your patronage. All the best. Your Flick Shack proprietor, Angie. Hmm. By the way, what's a postman's favourite herb? Parsley. <laughs> Here's your mail.
that's heavier than I thought. Nope, no answer. Mail carrier Meredith. Farmer Jack. Good to see at least someone's working today. As opposed to Frank? As opposed to me. Can't harvest taters with all this rain. But Frank's not twiddling his thumbs, I can tell you that. You spoke to him? Yeah, just talked to him on the phone. He's mad as a wet hen. It's quite entertaining, actually. Thanks for dropping by, mail carrier Meredith. I gotta get back to it. Okay, Jack. Good luck with the weather. Hope it'll clear up. Thank you much. heavier than I thought. Hi, Maureen. P.O. people. I need to pause the music for a special message. Uh, hush, darling. I want to hear this. And so do you. It's from our own Robert Harris, who wants to keep Providence Oaks pretty. Uh, don't flatter yourself. He's talking about the trees. Take it away, Robert. White Clovers, listen up. I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Isn't that something? It could have been more juicy, I guess. But it does say exactly what he wants it to, which is rare for our Robert. Even though he does have his redeeming qualities, doesn't he just? I wonder how he came up with the idea, though. Well, actually, Robert set it up himself, at Jack's. Did he now? And how would you know about that, huh? Because I was at the studio when he was recording it. I see. Robert wasn't kidding when he said uh, he wants to keep pretty things around in Providence Oaks now, was he? You, you think so? Well, that's what I heard. Anyway, I actually wanted to talk to you about something else. What are you doing this Sunday evening, hon? Something tells me I'm about to find out. You know it. Listen here. I'm hosting a very special first time open mic night this upcoming Sunday. We'll have some drinks, some food, discover the town's hidden talent or not. If you know what I mean, it'll be a hoot. More like a hoot and a half. Count me in. Good! I already had you down on my list, of course. But it's nice of you to RSVP. That's settled then. 
I will see you this Sunday at 8 p.m. And tell everyone you meet, okay? Let me see you put those postal delivery muscles to good use. Let's just say I'll do my best. There you go. You're catching up. Now I have to go unpack some deliveries out back, but I will see you soon, darling. And don't forget about the open mic. I couldn't if I wanted to. And there we go, that one is done. Now, like I said, obviously we're at the point now where we know the town, we know the people. So, there's not really a lot going on, just apart from, you know, achievements-wise, there's nothing else. We've got Alcoholics Anonymous right here, the old, uh, Alcoma Frolic Dad, which to be fair, if you're on holiday, you're going to get off your nut. Um, but yeah, that's why the commentary's been a little bit less uh, the last time. There's just not a lot else to particularly do. For the time being. We're used to everything. We're just sort of getting to the end. Today. Oh, just wait until the wet season really starts. It never ends. Why haven't you told her yet? Let me talk to her. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Weiss. Meredith, sorry to break it up. Your mom wants to talk to you. Meredith, I'm so excited. Your dad and I found this cottage this weekend near the beach. It's so pretty. Not too big, but who wants to be inside anyway? Wow, that sounds great. What's the plan? Live there? Yes. We talked to the owner. We can rent it for the time being, spend the winter here. And if we like it, we can buy it and settle down here for good. Awesome! I'm so happy for you. Isn't it something? And uh, it means that our house will be vacant for a while. We won't put it on the market until we've tried out Florida for a few months. So, um, if you want to extend your stay in Providence, oh. Are you serious? I'm pretty serious, yes. But uh, it's a pretty big deal, so just think about it for now. Hmm? Can I talk to her for a sec again? Yeah, here comes your dad again. Bye, dear. I'm going to get us something bubbly. Hey, Meredith. Just wanted to say that I'll call again at the end of this week. Have a great one. Okay. Bye, Dad. Memories, memories, memories. Of you and me Memories Oh, Mickey, <laughs> that was so deep. Right, Meredith? Oh, yeah. Awesome. It's in the darkness when my soul stars align and illuminate the real me. Oh, baby, I'm so happy for you. We, we need to celebrate this moment. I'll be right back, ladies. Mickey can be difficult sometimes, but nights like these, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but with him. How did you two meet? At a dorm party. He was the cool guy who dropped out of college, and I was about to do the same. Is she interrogating you again, June? Oh, Mickey. Be nice to sweet Meredith. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. Uh, sorry for being a hard ass the other day, Meredith. It's just that we need to be a bit cautious. So, Mickey, that was disgusting singing. I laughed my nut off at it in mind, to be fair. Um, so a couple of things, this is the important bit now, where we get offered the RV and we're obviously having to accept it. 
Um, you don't have to drink and you don't have to smoke some weed, but I do anyway because why not? You're all you're all chilling. You're all, I mean you're on holiday to be honest, so I think it's about time you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> Let's not spoil this evening with heavy stuff, okay? Ah, you're so right, Junebug. Who cares about the man when I've got you? There's something that'll make you feel lighter. Much lighter. <coughs> Meredith! Sure. My turn. How about some booze? Sure. What do you have? Beer, wine, and whiskey. Whiskey? Why not? Gotcha. Be right back. Memories. 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 Of you. Alrighty, here you go. Ah, oh, this is the life. It sure is. It will be even better once we're finally in Canada. I'm sure you'll have So we've had some whiskey, we've had some weed, we're all good. And now they're gonna realize what the hell are we gonna do with the RV? And obviously, like I said, we are going to be accepting. Make sure to accept it this time. If not, you'll have to load up the last autosave. And it takes so it does take a while to get Nexus Point since you can't actually skip any dialogue even if you've just seen it. Yeah, free RV, bro. Damn right. So say really guys, that's awesome. Really guys? That's awesome. No problem. They don't believe in possessions while they've got a load of possessions in their RV. But, yep, sure thing, whatever. Uh, so, that is the second part there for Free Spirit. Now, there's only two more parts, basically. Oh, Mickey. Enough. Enough singing, Pral. Boop. No, 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 stop now. You're going to make me laugh. <coughs> stop it. God damn it. Uh, but, no, basically... Um, there's going to be some dialogue options with Laurie and Angie, where it basically says you can have it if you want, but we're not going to be uh, telling them that they can have the RV. We're going to be keeping the RV, and then we can leave in the RV. Happy days. But obviously I'll let you know when the dialogue option, particular di dialogue option comes up. Otherwise, it's another day. What is it, Thursday today? So we've got three days, including today, left. And then it's time for the endings, the long, 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 schlong, dong-ass endings. Well, don't get me started or I won't even have time for the weather. Speaking of... Interesting. Here's your mail. These look like bills.
no answer. sight for sore eyes. Oh, hi, Miss J... Mildred? How so? Are you expecting more mail from your son? It's just... this week. It's all a bit much for me. I need to get my hair done for Sunday's special evening, but I can't leave my cats alone. And then all of a sudden, Frank has gone missing. He still needs to bring me an envelope. Please tell me that you have it with you. I'm afraid this is just a postcard. But what do you mean he needs to bring you an envelope? Oh, don't be a nosy posy, Meredith. Oh dear, oh dear. He can't just have vanished into thin air, can he? Don't worry, I'm sure Frank will show up again. Oh, Frankie boy, always making me worry too much. And I need to cancel the hairdresser's appointment, but what if I can't reschedule? Perhaps I could look after your cats. Would you, my dear? It's tomorrow evening. That would be such a relief for me. And the cats. Tomorrow night? I'm really sorry, Mildred, but I already made plans for tomorrow. Oh dear, oh dear. I need to go inside and calm down a bit. And there we go then. So it took around 3 hours and 23 minutes to pull up my big boy pants and say, No, I'm not going to do anything with you. Stop asking me to do stuff. Screw off, old lady. And other people. So, yeah. I just haven't got no more time to be wasting looking after cats and doing old people's hair. I want to go home. Oh, I want to get the rest of my achievements, damn it. So here we are then. Now we, we have we are nipping to see Laurie. Now this is where one of the dialogue options is, where we can say you can have the RV if you want, but remember we're not actually going to say that. So grab your package and give it to Laurie. Wait. No, no, no. That was round. Meredith, look at this house on wheels. I have no idea where it came from, but it's absolutely rad. It's mine, actually. Mickey and June gave it to me. You know, that young couple down by the lake campground. Whoa, really? That's so tight. Here, they left this note on the driver's seat. Oh, let me read it. Life's a journey. So it's going to be this little bit of dialogue. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's happy. And it's going to be this next dialogue option, which we have to choose. And we're going to say, I don't know, could it stay here for a while? So do not say you can have it if you want. Because then that will void the ending achievement. And you'll have to go through, um, you'll have to nip 
to the next or last auto save, and you just don't want to do that. Tinkering, but it's going to need a lot of work. It can stay here for as long as you need. Good to hear, Lori. I can already hear the cogs in your head spinning at top speed. What are your plans? Well, if it's going to be here a while, I should give it a name first. Can't have such a beautiful vehicle and not give it a name. How about the Sea Turtle? Big, slow, washed up, just like a turtle. Or the raccoon, because it's got brown spots and is full of trash. Or the hermit shell. It had many owners over the years, just like the shell of a hermit crab. I like... The sea turtle. Good choice. I'll get working on it right away. See you later. Bye. heavier than I thought. Ah, yes, yes, yes. He could only look on in sheer terror as Madeline threw the key straight into the lake. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is good stuff. Ah, a writer. How interesting. Oh, for Christ's sakes, go away! If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times! You haven't told me anything. I'm, I'm new here. Oh, bloody heck. Do I sound like I care? You lot are all the same to me. Just go away! How many yokels are there in this backwater town? Do they realize people come out to these kinds of places because they're supposed to be remote and quiet? Sir, if you don't want to be disturbed, don't mail order anything? <sighs> I... I do beg your pardon. I... yes, I am expecting a package. I didn't know you were from the Postal Service, ma'am. Oh, so now I have something you need, and you quite miraculously are capable of common courtesy. All right, all right, I'm sorry. It's just... I've been under a lot of pressure lately from my publisher, as well as my wife. I do appreciate your driving all the way up here, and Lord knows I'll be needing those ribbons. Just please leave them on the porch, and thank you. You're welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, now, where was I? She threw the key in the lake. Then what happens? 
Christ's sake, she made me lose my bloody train of thought. No, wait, I got it. And then he says... So, just wondering, uh, as we head back to the main post office now, just wondering why all writers seem to be angry English people. Every time there's an angry writer, they always have that posh English voice and they get really pissed off when people try to interrupt them. Ugh! What, 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 why? <laughs> what, did, what did English writers do to Americans to be portrayed as so angry and evilly? <laughs> Funny, though. Oh, here he goes. Anal Catman's back. Good afternoon, Mr. Morgan. I wanted to let you know that today was my last day here. I see. Well, thanks for the help. Where are you going now? That's all I have to say. Good luck. Hello? Hi, Em. It's me, Kay. Oh, hi, Kay. Good. You're home. Listen, I don't know if you're busy tonight, and I wouldn't bother you like this, but I'm kind of in a huge pickle at the moment, and now I'm imagining being inside of a huge pickle. Thanks, Brain. <laughs> sure, what's up? Okay, so this is going to sound like I'm 16, but I have these tickets to a really big concert tonight for Barry and me, and it seems the babysitter has just bailed on me. Alright, so maybe the babysitter part doesn't sound like I'm 16, I hope. <laughs> anyway, it's Journey, so I'm like, I need to go tonight, and I got these tickets ages ago. And it's a long drive to Portland, so we'll probably be out all night, and I promise you I've called everyone and their brother besides they're really good kids to watch tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can I get a shortcut to the question? <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're totally right. I'm blabbering on R and I. Okay, don't freak out. You got this. Alright, recap. Journey tonight in Portland. Got tickets, sitter bailed. So I guess you figured out by now that I'm awkwardly trying to Maybe you could do me a huge favor and watch Grace and Max tonight? Hey, it's fine. Don't worry. I'll babysit tonight. Oh my god, are you serious? That would help me out in such a big way! And I would owe you big time. Huge! No problem. So, what time do you need me? You're a lifesaver. As soon as you can make it. You don't have to bring anything. There's food, videos, even a cardboard replica of... So yeah, this bit doesn't actually waste any time. You don't actually see Meredith babysitting the kids. And for some reason, this is where Kay starts getting really annoying. Like, she's a, like in her head, she's an immature 14-year-old. I don't know why, but she seemed to be all quite chilled and cool first. And she started getting more... <laughs> so, sorry, no offense, but more annoying towards the end of the game. Anyway, that's Thursday done. So now we've got Friday and Saturday left to do. And, ah, oh, Frank, you and your mustache are back. Fantastic. I guess Morgan didn't stick around to welcome me back. Good riddance. Hell yeah, that clueless piece of work. Tell me more. How'd you get rid of him? Well, what can I say? Don't mess with the big boys. I guess they didn't understand that some of my customers do a little more than talking about their cats. This sounds very juicy. Frank Coleman's no stranger to the high-stakes game. I've got lawyers in my inner circle. All it took were a couple of lawsuit threats. Sweet. That should keep him off our backs for a while. Haha, <laughs> yes. But that buffoon will be back. You can bet on it. What odds can you give me? Haha, <laughs> Meredith. I better get back to work. And I say, what's wrong with a little bet now and again? Although Frank looks like the type to uh, bet his kids and a, a mortgage on a, you know, $10 bet on some American sports. Yeah. American sports. Baseball. American egg ball. Nancy, the floor is yours. Yeah. Jack, I've got a pet peeve. Why do people start fake coughing when I'm smoking in my store? 
If you don't like it, just leave. Interesting. So, as it's just another Friday and we are just going around delivering all the mail and pa packages, i got to tell you that I dressed my dog up as a postman one day. He bit himself. Bah! What a stupid, <laughs> stupid. Oh, that's heavier than I thought. Driving along the highway above the Hello? Friday delivery day. Well, just call me Friday delivery K. Okay, no, that sounded better in my head. Someone's in a good mood today. Yes, thanks for looking after Max and Gracie last night. You were a real trooper for stepping in last minute. No problem. They were great. I appreciate the lie. <laughs> so... How was the concert? <laughs> oh yeah. Man, Journey is so good. Those songs have been stuck in my head all day. Eh, that sounds great. I know, right? There's just so much cool stuff being created right now, you know? I mean, Journey was cool. I got to know them through Barry at first, but I tell you, if Prince or New Order ever came to Portland, I would sell my spleen for tickets. One spleen, two bands. That's quite the potential dilemma. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned Cyndi Lauper, or Run DMC, or Stevie Wonder. And before you go there, I know you're probably setting up a joke about spleens and Hammond organs right now. Joke's on you, because I don't even know what that means. You know, music organ, body organ, never mind. All jokes aside though, I spent half the concert thinking about how I haven't really focused on my own music for a while now. Kids, work, all that stuff, so much going on. And I mean, I love tinkering, but right now, I'm not sure I'm even creating anything cool or just, you know? Not even Barry is allowed to listen to my songs at this stage, to be honest. I'd love to hear your music sometime. I'm sure it's great. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Maybe I'll hold you to that. I was thinking, I have a mixtape with some of my stuff, you know? Just something I've been trying out with my new synthesizer. I'd be honored. That's great. It's just something I've been playing around with. Don't expect any fireworks. And hey, don't tell me what you think yet, yeah? You'll be my secret special audience of one. So I can get used to the idea of an audience. Would this have anything to do with Sunday evening? Okay, don't tell anyone, but I'm thinking of performing a song on my new synth this Sunday. Holy crap, I just said that out loud. Dude, you are coming to the open mic, right? Of course, that's great. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But act cool, yeah? No one else knows yet. See you there. Sure thing. Back to my own journey for now. Haha. <laughs> nope, ignoring that. Bye now. Ah, <sighs> yeah, thanks, Kay, for that delightfully insightful uh, conversation again. Okay, B. Anyway, my postman the other day told me he was going on holidays. I asked him if it was Barcelona or Istanbul he was headed to. Just said it was for a stag do for his friend. Ah, 
an all male party, I exclaimed. <laughs> ah, too funny, too good, too spicy. Have you ever seen a male box before? My postman said sarcastically. I said, yes, of course, Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Get it, male box, male boxer, boxing males. Uh, hmm. Probably could have picked Mike Tyson or someone completely better there, but you know, the joke still stands. I was away for a few days, on an urgent job out of state. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Here's the mail. Thanks, and likewise. Hmm, priority mail from Town Hall. Let's see what they have to say this time. Dear Mr. Harris, on behalf of yada yada yada, concerning Environmental Management Act 1213, yada yada yada. Uh, wait. What? <laughs> Listen to this! We have decided to postpone the construction of apartments for at least six months. We hope this satisfies you as well as the many residents... Right, this is important. If you want to save yourself about an extra five minutes um, for all of the endings, what you need to do, Robert's basically going to ask us to dinner. I say yes, and that adds an extra cutscene... Mm, which we don't really need because we've got to we've got to watch these bloody end in three times. So say I don't think I can make it, Robert. You you can if you want. You can go if you want. Um, but if you want to save yourself another number of minutes, there say no. I don't think I can make it. I'm pretty sure then that the dinner scene doesn't happen, and the ending scenes are a little bit shorter. Uh, because um, yeah, it's it's just very frustrating with the basically. With the endings, you'll get one ending, and then the last autosave will go back to the end of the workday, which is the 13th of September. So you've got to go through the whole dialogue of Sunday and the beginning of the 15th of September as well before we can actually make a decision. And, and if you include Robert's dinner scene in that as well, all of that generally takes about 25 to 30 minutes. So you're looking at an additional hour and 15 to an hour and a half extra. Oh no, well. No, sorry, about an hour extra, sorry, if you uh, do the two endings, the two other endings. An hour extra, and you cannot skip any of the cutscenes, and you cannot skip any of the dialogue, so you've got to keep watching the ending. So that's why I say there, probably best, if you want to save yourself a couple of minutes, not to uh, go for 
dinner with Robert. But, you know, if, if you want to, that's also fine. It generally doesn't make a difference. But, you know, the autosave system in this game is, is not the best, in all fairness. And we can't manually save during a cutscene or dialogue as well. So that is also a big pain in the butt snatch. So let's just finish up the day then and get on with the festivities. Where's the package? The waxworms have arrived. Ew! Have I been walking around with worms? <laughs> and another little time saver here. Mr. Murky, okay, is going to go fishing. He's going to invite us to tag along. Um, again, me spamming. I accidentally said yes, but again, if you want to save yourself a couple of minutes, just say no thanks. I couldn't think of anything worse. Okay. Oh, really? Sounds like fun. Okay, we'll show up here at 4 p.m. sharp. So, is this a quiet day, or does it always take this long? Fishing requires patience. You've only been here for two hours. And that's the nice thing about fishing. Yeah, there's a fine line between boredom and relaxation. I find it hard to relax sometimes. Fishing also requires silence. Bert, can I ask you a question? <sighs> Never mind, I'll stop bothering you. <sighs> we ought to be heading back home. It's been a fine day, and I thank you for the company. Ooh, Kay's tape. Let's have a listen.
Hello? Hi, Meredith. Guess what I signed today? Hmm. Let me think. The m, -m, -m monster deal? Oh, yes. You are now talking to Steve Mitchell, CEO of a multi-million dollar enterprise. But before I continue my insufferable bragging, I have a thing or two to say to you, about you. You've been a huge part of the success of this company, and I feel this is just the beginning. We're entering the golden age of personal computers, and we've got front row tickets. The past two weeks have made me realize that I couldn't have done it without you, and I'm going to need you even more in the coming years. So, here's a new monster deal I want you to think about. Become a partner in the company for 20% of the shares and a significant pay raise. Sig Kent. The only condition is that I need your commitment for the next five years. So, there it is. Think about it, and let's talk about it more when you're back in the office. Oh! Wow, Steve! That sounds great! Just let it sink in a bit. I don't need an answer right now. I have to get back to my, uh, million-dollar lifestyle. Actually, no, I, I need to get cranking on lots of stuff. Talk soon, Meredith. I know Steve's now just got a multi-millionaire business and everything, but the way he says ma 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 monster deal makes me want to, you know, literally take his chin out with a machete or something. Of course I wouldn't do that, I'm not a violent person. But Jesus Christ, shut up Steve. Then these disgusting hamburgers, don't you agree Jean-Paul? Oh yes, these hamburgers are fantastic. A postcard from Angie. Miss Meredith, I am so, so sorry I haven't been able to see you. It's just that I've been swamped organizing my not so timely exit from Providence Oaks. I'm sure you understand. You've probably seen the foreclosure notice. That certainly helped expedite my decision to leave. Anyway, I'll be honest. I'm still thinking about that kiss we shared in the car. And I don't usually dwell on these kind of things. So, feel special, Meredith. I hear you're going to the open mic night on Sunday. I wasn't planning on going, but I want to see you before I leave. I'm really anxious to find out what you've decided to do. Whether you're going to stay in this town, or go back to the city, or do something else entirely. And I'm going to be forward, as you know I always am. I'd like to know if little old me figures into those plans, somehow. So, anyway, I'll see you there, yeah? Love, Angie. So, right then, so after Angie's uh, Flick the Bean Shack closed, she, she just left us a note and then disappeared. She didn't even deliver it to my door, she gave it to the post office. Come on, Angie, we slipped each other a tongue and everything. God damn it. Anyway, this is our final day of posting packages, which I assume by now you're probably getting sick of, and it might even put you off doing a real-life postman job. It's a lot more entertainment uh, if you're doing it in not a small town such as this. So it's just the same old thing. And then basically at the end of the day is where the autosave starts. And then it is literally just one huge big dialogue option all the way until we get to Monday morning where we can make the decisions. Uh, but there is another important chat that we have to have with Angie again when we are in the bar at Moe's Diner on Sunday. So again, I'll obviously let you know when we come to that one anyway.
Here's your mail. Oh, you're still here, huh? That makes two of us. When are your parents coming back? Actually, they might just stay in Florida. Florida? Your parents? <laughs> yeah, isn't it weird? They'll be back soon. Florida is expensive and honestly isn't all it's cracked up to be. They found a lovely and affordable place next to the beach. Sunshine and the beach get boring real fast. Well, I better be on my way. Have a nice day. Answer.
Now, why can't you send sailors through the mail? Well, you try explaining to the postman why you have a lot of seamen for him. Seamen for him. <laughs> seamen. Oh, it's funny because it means seamen. I'm busy. Okay. Good luck. No! Damn it! I almost had it. I almost fucking had it. Thanks for breaking my concentration. Ooh, take it easy. It's just a game. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible. Absolutely horrible. Maybe you should try a different hobby. You know what? I can beat this damn game, and I'm not quitting until I have. Good luck with that. Oh, quick, quick, couple of fire ones then before we get into the nitty gritty. If you rearrange the letters of Postman Pat, he gets really annoyed. Ha! What does Postman Pat call a fake postman? An imposter! Ha! Postman Pat explained to me why I'm not receiving any mail. I just don't get it. Ha! What do you call Postman Pat when he's retired? Just Pat. Ah! Ha! Ah, ah, ah. What language does Postman Pat use when delivering to Hogwarts? Parcel tongue. Ha! 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 Why you couldn't Jess help Postman Pat with the, the, with the delivery? He wouldn't let her. Ha! What do you do if you cross a leopard with a watchdog? A terrified Postman Pat. Ha! And that's about it for me then. I'm done. The quick fire round of jokes are over. I hope you enjoyed at least uh, at least three of those, uh, three of these jokes that have popped in and out. But we are coming up now closely to the uh, end of our working day. Thank God. Okay, fellow Providence Okians, it's time once again for the sent in letters and announcements. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know. Hey, folks, just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right. Claim your 15 minutes of fame, enjoy some well performances, and the usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening. And maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at Moe's at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. Well, you heard her, folks. And I'll be there, too, so you better not miss it. Back to the music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail Carrier Meredith. Farmer DJ Jack. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Ghost drivers? Yeah, you know, people driving on the wrong side of the road. Nope, haven't seen him. Okay, I was just wondering. Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. I reckon. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much.
Right then, so, this is now basically the start of where we're going to get up to the ending. So, what are we on now? 405, right, okay. That's interesting. So, it literally takes around 25 to 30 minutes for each ending. Because, first of all, we're going to speak to, obviously, Frank right here. Frank's mustache. Then we're going to, obviously, phone up our Ma and Pa. Um, and then we've got to go and have dinner with Robert. Then we've got a long cutscene, which includes uh, Kay singing in Moe's Diner. A lot more conversation with Maureen. A lot more conversation with absolutely freaking God damn everyone. Yeah, you can see how annoyed uh, I got. And I know you will get with this. So my advice is to be, um, get your phone out, get, get a tablet. Just go ahead, listen to something for the next hour and a, and a bit. Or what you know, make sure you're watching a film or something because it gets very sleepily boring very quickly. Um, but for the, any, like I said, for these dialogue options, we're picking absolutely anything. It's only when we got to speak to Angie in the. I am going to choose the dialogue option here. You can again choose it absolutely anything you want. Um, but it's only when we speak to Angie in Mo's diner when we're doing the RV ending. Is, is the literally only important one. Otherwise, you can just keep spamming A and listen or watch whatever the hell you want. This bit's going to take a while. Uh, but I've got to be honest, this is definitely the, the, the biggest downfall of the game for me right here. The fact that we, the fact that there is no autosave on the, the particular day. It only autosaves after we've finished delivering letters ra rather than through each working day. So I, I hope um, they release an update which... Uh, makes the autosave do that, which would save a ton of time. Or the fact that we can, hopefully, if they release an update, do a manual save wherever the hell you want as well. Um, so, generally, this these endings are the biggest downfalls of, of the game. Brilliant game, but these endings, god damn it. So, hopefully, they do an update, make the save system a lot better. Otherwise, you've got a lot of listening to do. So, Go get yourself a cheeky brownski, go get yourself a couple of snacks, and go and put something on. And uh, just keep bashing the A button every now and again. I know, but you've got so much going on. Do you want to leave all that behind? It's tricky. It's the thing with having the cake and eating it too. Is it just work related, or are there other people involved? You know, any interesting, interesting ones perhaps? Well, there are some interesting developments, yes. Oh, there are. But are they really interesting enough to give up your entire career? I really think you need to think long and hard on it. Oh, hold on. I have a suspicion Dad wants to talk to me. Meredith, I just wanted to say, you need to clean the lint filter on the dryer every once in a while. If you never do that, it could burn the house down. No problem, Dad. I'll make sure to do that. Great, thanks. I sometimes suddenly worry about things like that in the middle of the night. And it's not about the dryer, of course. I want you to be safe. And I'm sure you'll be okay. I'll be fine. Don't lose sleep over me. Okay, Em. Take care. I gotta go. We're running out of coins again. Bye! I hope you don't think I'm a cheapskate for having dinner here. There aren't a lot of other restaurants around, and I'm pretty sure their food isn't better than Moe's. Don't worry about it, Robert. I love it here. Thanks, Meredith. You're such a kind person. Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Ladies first. Hi, Maureen. It's hard to pass up a juicy T-bone steak. Excellent choice. Now, I'll tell you what, this first bit was actually quite cool. Ooh, picking a juicy T-bone steak, or we'll have a beer as well. Oh, lovely, look at that, perfect. You don't know what's happening. But like I said, the worst thing is, we've gone through all this, we pressed the continue button at the end of the game, but there is no option to still skip the dialogue. So you've still got to watch and read everything all, uh, everything anyway. So this is why Robert's, it's not Robert's fault, but this is the only reason why he really pisses me off. Just because we've got to listen to this bit a yeah. billion times. 
Well, three times, but feels like a billion. He's gonna do a thing. Jack, what's he gonna do? Announce the weather for next week? Believe it or not, he's a very good ballet dancer. Jack? Really? <laughs> no, he's into comedy. Would have loved to have heckled him. Oh well, this is a good week anyhow. Because you're sitting here with me? Alrighty, here are your beverages, folks. I'm afraid the food might take a little longer. As a certain kitchen helper thought the freezer was a good place for storing steaks. Oh, I really should get one of those microwave ovens to defrost them. You seem a little stressed. Is it the upcoming open mic? Why should I be stressed about that? It's going to be lovely. And you better be there, Robert Harris. Maureen, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. I did not just hear you say that, young man. Oh, by the way, Meredith, I need to steal him for two minutes. He needs to check on some wiring for me. Excuse me, Meredith. This is Maureen's jurisdiction. Have to obey the law. Mmm, that tasted so good. Thanks, Maureen, for the fantastic blueberry pie. You're welcome. It's my way of making up for stealing you away from Meredith. Ooh, I swear. She can give quite the stink eye if she wants, can't you, hon? Oh boy, the world would be boring without her. Speaking of, are you gonna miss your daily delivery round? Yes, I probably will. Must be nice here, compared to the big city. Have you always lived in a small town? Yeah, Providence Oaks is my second one. After my divorce, I had to move away from the first one. Everything and everyone reminded me of her. I can imagine that. But maybe I shouldn't bother you with the innermost feelings of a lumberjack. Maybe not. I mean, if you don't want to. Robert and Meredith, sorry to break up your conversation, but we're closing up early tonight. Gotta set up some stuff for the open mic night, and I can't use any peeping eyes. Oh, okay, Maureen. No problem. Let me get the check for you, so I can leave you two to your lovely evening. Can you put it on my tab, Maureen? Anything for you, darling. Thanks, Robert. Don't mention it. You've helped me out so much. This is nothing compared to that. Now let's get going before Maureen gets her broom out. Meredith, thanks again for your help. I'm not sure what would have happened if you hadn't come here for your mail delivery vacation. You're welcome, Robert. I was happy to help you out. A little help goes a long way. Hope to see you around again. You too, Robert. Take care. But you're not leaving without a hug. Anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, want to give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those stakes are too high. <laughs> this one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway. 
But all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, one car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens! <laughs> well, folks, wasn't that special? Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic, after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So, come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? Love it. That hairdresser did a great job. Thank you, dear. Pity it's quite the waste of time and money, seeing as how I can't stay for long. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced, and he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. All right, well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Mag Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? I must admit it. It's at least a little funny. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss, the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair, and now I'm here looking like a loser. I'm sure you'll beat the game one day. Don't give up on the dream. I can't play like this. All right, okay, so since... Our little ginger pubed is not playing a game, he's more chilled, so does that mean that all us gamers are violent so uh, sociopaths? Well, I hope not, but, um, uh, well, no, nah, no, nah, none of us are like him. None of us. So basically, here's Angie then, she has just uh, surprised us. Oh, she looks very good without glasses. Well, she look cuter with glasses. I don't know, some people can pull glasses off like, BAM! Me, I look like an absolute dick snatch, so that's why I don't really wear glasses, but, um... <laughs> so, again, for this particular... Basically, with the first ending, we're going to be staying in the town. So, these dialogue options don't matter, but I, I do just want to let you know, as Laurie pops up, I just want to let you know for the next uh, ending that we're going to do, for leaving the RV, which dialogue options to pick. Again, I'll let you know in just a little bit anyway. Hyper speed. The sea turtle is ready to go. <laughs> That's great, Lori. Thanks. I'm sure she's just like new. Well, I wouldn't say that, but you'll see. Gotta go later. An RV? You never told me you had an RV. Well, it's kind of a recent development. You know Mickey and June? The hippie couple? So we'll pick these ones just to be set on the safe side every time. So we're going to choose, and I did. Then Laurie gave it a check up. And I did. Then Laurie gave it a check up. Then make sure to choose, and now I am the proud owner of the sea turtle. So basically what we're not doing is saying it's yours. So just do not. <laughs> would you? I bet you would. Yes, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, which was the top option, as I just get a little notification there. Apologies about that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. There we go, lovely. So as long as you never say to Angie, you can have it if you want, that gives us the opportunity then to uh, get the end in with the RV. So, uh, but, but apart from those two dialogue options, that's it. We're literally choosing whatever in the hell we want. Um, hmm. Well, you are a good kither. Nah, it doesn't matter here. Um, so, just, uh, you know, crack on. Try not to fall asleep. Twice? But at some point, you've got to give me a definite answer. You get that, right? Look alive, folks. It's time for the final act. It's a doozy. <laughs> Saved by the bell, babe. I got stuff to do anyway. Angie, wait. 
dear people, none other than our own Kate Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl, and I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. This does not happen a lot, but you have left me speechless. That was K, people. Another round of applause. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see someone flourish, but I'd rather be home right now. <laughs> I don't blame you. Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Case place, Mo Case. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause and have some drinks with us. That was amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Em. It felt amazing. I was so super nervous, you know? Like, shaking and all that. I'm so glad it went well. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations! That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me like a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> But it feels good, you know? How did it feel to be up there? Oh, it was so great to be performing again. It felt amazing. I'm all over the place right now. It was such a rush. I will definitely be doing that again. If they let me, of course. That's great. I am so proud of you, Kay. You really have made a great life here. Thanks, Em. I'd like to think so. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so... I just want to say... It was good to have you back these past weeks, Em. Really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. Promise you'll keep in touch? Whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course! And remember... Time... Marches, marches on! on. <laughs> See you, Kay. Thanks. For everything.
my lovely people. The time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next, but I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us. And there's plenty of food and drink to go around. By the way, I just love the way she said, thanks Kay for everything. What the hell did Kay do for us? We delivered all her crap. We looked after her kids while she got knobbed off by her husband in Journey. What'd she do for us? God damn it. So, we're gonna... Now, with these uh, bits of dialogue with Maureen, you can actually just say, Oh, I'm ready to turn in, or I, I want to hit the hay, rather than go through the other bits of dialogue again. That's just to save another little bit of time. So there we go. I think I'm going to hit the hay. So just choose that option, and then that'll end this little bit a little bit quicker. Like the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Seems like a bold choice to announce it to the town like that, though. Ha! You know me, hon. At least all the options are out in the open now, right? So what's next for you, now that you're handing over the reins? Well, to be honest, I'll probably stick around the diner for now, help out. And maybe I'll try my hand at something different on the side, you know? Maybe fix up some of those cabins in the woods. Rent them out. Never too old to find something new to do. That sounds like a great idea. Doesn't it just? How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected. And I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, You've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around? Move back? I think I have a feeling. Yeah. Then you go follow that feeling, hon. Thanks, Maureen. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen. Dear Meredith Weiss, thank you for participating in our annual photography contest. Your wonderful picture did not win the grand prize, but you are still a winner. The attached voucher gives you a 20% discount to our autumn course. Sign up today and never take a blurry picture again. David Gillespie, Photography for Beginners, Inc. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the... So, this is where decision time is then. Now, like I said, if they'd put an auto save in right here, this will... Well, it would have saved a lot of time. So, hopefully, like I said, they do that with um, with an update maybe in the future. It would be fantastic, and it would save just a lot of frustration, to be honest. Because stuff like that... Three endings and things like that are annoying anyway. But the, to then have to go back two previous days just to play an extra 20, 25 minutes. It's a little bit of a piss take, sadly. Um... But the first thing we're doing, we're actually going to be staying in the town. So this time, we're going to say, and yes, I want to wear it a bit longer. So this is the important uh, choosing ending dialogue right here. So yes, I want to wear it a bit longer. And uh, don't worry, we're, we're, we're not um, going to be delivering any mail. This is generally the end now, thank God for that. So you'll go through a little bit more dialogue, and then we'll get someone who's chasing us down on the road. I had a quick look, see if we could skip skip this bit again. Sadly, we couldn't. Profits, Meredith, it's nothing. Just a friendly service to the people here. Well, okay, if it's just that. Well, there is a bit of profit, to be honest. You know what? I'll give you 10%. You know what? I'll give you 10%. Deal. Ka-ching! Welcome on board. Now, let's get to work. 
The mail doesn't deliver itself. Okay, let's see what today's weather will be like. P.O. people, good morning! Today's weather will be nothing short of gorgeous, and I can't wait to go outside and head out to the acres. But not before sharing, you know what? P.O. positive or pet peeves? I don't need callers for today's P.O. positive. I'm picking it myself. <laughs> I'm talking about Moe's open mic last night. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm sorry if I offended anyone with my jokes. Well, no, actually, I am not sorry. Not sorry at all. Thank you much, Mo and Kay, for hosting it. It's just one of the things that makes Providence Oaks the best place in the world. Have a great day. Uh, <laughs> you tell him, Jack. What's this guy up to? Wait, is that Robert? Y yeah, yeah, Robert, I'll pull over. Hey, Meredith, sorry about that. I hope it is... And this is the final, final bit then for the first ending. Uh, so, obviously, we're going to get the achievement hometowner anyway. But you can do whatever you want with Robert here. You've got, you'll have a choice to um, shave his beard, lick his balls. No, I'm joking. I'm just joking. No, you, you can do nothing. Get in the car. Um, kiss him or hug him or whatever. I just get in his car. I can't be asked to kiss anyone, to be honest. We were... We were hoping that uh, Angie would have stayed. We would have given her a little flick of the tongue. But, um, yeah. I'm, wait, what? You're not going? Yep. It's nice here. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, great. Well, I might as well blurt it all out. I like you. A lot. And I didn't want to give in to it. I've been through a rough breakup once. And... I didn't want to risk ever feeling like that again. Robert, I can't just decide that right now. And I have mail to deliver. <laughs> the mail can wait. Stick it to the man. I mean, the man, in general. Not me. Just hop in my car. Okay. Could have been a total, uh, you know, a total player, and give him a kiss and uh, give him a little flick in the old anal bead. But like I said, we're just uh, jumping the car. That'll do. Can't be asked. But this is where the first achievement unlocks. Anyway, uh, anyway. Now what I was looking for was to see if we could just auto save it back to um, somewhere quite previous. But for one, you can't autosave because this is genuinely the end. The credits will start appearing right now. And I tell you what, you know what's maddening, actually? Editing these endings seems a lot quicker than actually playing through them. Ha, huh, that's mad, isn't it? Isn't that maddening? So, like, like I said, absolutely brilliant game. Fantastic. So nice and chilled. Honestly, one of my favourite games this year so far, to be honest. If this is the type of things that you like. Uh, but we can just press the B button to go back to the main menu. Again, sadly, it was just these endings that ruined it. Um, but we'll continue. And just to let you know then, that loading screen there will take roughly about 30 seconds. I literally just edited it down ever so slightly. But these are now the heavily edited cutscenes. So as you can see, 13th of September, returning to the post office. Yes, no, knowing this... Uh, was not happy bunny uh, to be honest oh, for Christ's sake so we got so we've literally now got to go through all those scenes again where we can't skip any of the cutscenes of dialogue we can't do anything else we've literally just got to sit our ass down and just wait until wait and press the a button a couple of times <laughs> it wants to kill my soul now that's what it generally felt like but uh, so yeah you've got to go through the whole thing again with Frank, with the whole, the absolutely whole spiel. Um, so remember that we don't want to be giving Angie the RV. And then this is what we're going to do. Uh, so I've obviously cut it to Monday 15th of September right here. And what we're going to say, as soon as we're back to this point, but no, I'm taking it off and we'll leave town. So that's very important. No, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Now... 
I obviously said earlier to Angie about not giving her the RV, so hopefully that's what you've done uh, this time round as well. And choose I'm going on a road trip. So that'll be... Um, you can choose either one of these and they'll unlock the particular ending. Um, but I just choose to uh, get the RV in. And obviously you've got this new little bit of cutscene again. Now what I was hoping was there was only going to be sort of two endings where if you leave Providence Oaks, that unlocks the other ending. But you actually have to choose that you go into the big city, which... Yeah, thanks so much for that. Yeah. So again, from here on out, doesn't matter what dialogue options you choose. Um, and it doesn't matter if you go or go without Angie, as she'll pop up in just a minute. Uh, literally doesn't matter because we will now be leaving in the RV and getting that particular achievement. Hooray! The sea turtle in all of her glory. Do you like her? I love her, Lori. She's amazing. Yay! Hey, Meredith. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Guess who? You know I'm just gonna guess Basil from Baker Street again. It's me, Angie Eastman. You know, I thought it'd be easier to guess the second time around. So, this is the RV, huh? Amazing, isn't it? It's perfect. So, where are we going first? <laughs> yeah, about that. Hmm? I would really, seriously, definitely like you to go with me. Wow, you've got me speechless. Again. <laughs> Just say yes. Yes, God yes, a thousand times yes. So, you probably have to go pack, right? Well... There it is. It's not much, just some clothes, some toiletries and trinkets, and seven shoeboxes filled with videotapes. So yeah, I'm all packed. Is that everything you own? Nah, all the big stuff is in storage right now. You know, furniture, electronics, life-size cardboard standee of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Colonel John Matrix. The usual. Anyway, give me the keys. I've heard about your driving. What? What have you heard? From who? People talk. When advertising exec David Howard, parentheses Albert Brooks, is passed over for a promotion and subsequently fired, he decides to change his whole life. He convinces his wife Linda, parentheses Monica Johnson, to sell their house and roam the country easy rider style in a Winnebago. Okay, forget this one. That's just not going to be relatable at all. <laughs> nope. We've got nothing in common with those guys. I have another flick where a bunch of academics set up a ghost hunting business in an old fire station. That should be way more accessible. Angie Eastman, have you seen every single tape in here? Not all of them, but most. Come on! But I don't mind watching them again. In fact, I'd love to see them with someone who... Knows nothing about movies? I was going to put it a little nicer than that. Someone who has... Unspoiled virgin eyes. Virgin eyes? What, are you a poet now? <laughs> All right, well, Lost in America will unspool before these virgin eyes soon enough. Tell me about Stand By Me. It's about four kids from Oregon, right? Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So, there, that is then Free Spirit. 
And again, sadly, we do have to go through the endings one more time, which, ugh. well, I don't know about you, but it, it generally drained the crap out of me. And I, again, I know I've already said something about it, but it's such a shame to end the game this way with such a really nice chilled game. It's sort of, uh, you know, to sort of end it so negatively. And not even negatively, the endings themselves are really lovely, but the way that the developers here have gone about it is is not brilliant. Seems like they've only just kept it in this way to keep you playing for a little bit longer, but it's just a little frustrating, which is unfortunate. So again, like I said, we've got to um, go back into the cutscene right here, go back to the post office, talk to Frank, your dad, do the whole Robert thing, do the whole bloody Monday, Sunday bar case singing. Ugh. Hateful. Hateful in the end. So we've got to go through all of that until we get back to Monday the 15th of September where we are talking to Frank Aloni. Um, again, with the Angie dialogue with the RV, you can literally choose whatever you want now because, of course, we've got that ending. We don't need the RV anymore. So if you wanted to see what else happened. The most hateful words in all of history. Saturday, September 13th afternoon. Okay, not in all of human history. I guess that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I mean. Just for the time being. And so ends a week full of turmoil. Can say that again. If only the Angels hadn't lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. The pattern is obvious. You're a gambling addict. Be right then. We've only got one more thing to pick. Thank God for that. As soon as we got here. Well, you lose all your money. You grey-headed, mustachioed fruit. But no, I'm taking it off, and we'll leave town again. So we're going to be leaving Providence Zones again. Of course, only this time we will be choosing the big city dialogue option. So there we go. Back to my home, my job, and my life in the big city, which, to be fair, looked pretty banging. The apartment looked nice and big, so why, why would you give that up? I suppose everyone's different, though. So, there we go, we've got that. There's literally nothing else to do now, nothing else to pick. We're just going to enjoy the next couple of minutes, get that final achievement, and then try and wake ourselves up. Go get yourself an energy drink and a big bag of Doritos. You've earned it. I'd love to take one last look over the lake. All right, go grab your stuff and let's go. So, if you're leaving, what's going to happen to the sea turtle? I don't know. Do you have any ideas? You could leave it in storage here, or put it up for sale. Give it to someone else who will use it. Are you hinting at something, Lori? Well, you can store it at our place if you want. We have enough space. Or I might use it to hide from my parents every once in a while. You know what? You can have it. What? Really? Oh, wow! That's so rad! Yeah, imagine that! Have fun with it, Lori. You'll get much more use out of it than I ever could, probably. All right, this is going to be fun! Hey, Meredith? I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Wagons West! So, here we are again, heading the other way. Aren't you going to miss it here? Probably. It feels odd to be leaving again. I wouldn't want to leave this place, not for a million bucks. Well, wait, no, two million bucks should be enough. 
Do you believe money can buy happiness? That's a good question. Give me a big pile of cash right now and I'll feel real happy. And I'm sure it'll last a couple of days, but then it'll probably start to wear off and I'll be back to complaining about the weather before you know it. But it's probably nicer to complain about the weather when you're living in a big old mansion. Hey, what's this honking clown up to? Move out of the way, you lunatic! Wait a minute. That's Robert Harris. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulling over. Sorry about that, Frank. Hope it didn't scare you. That's okay, Robert. I'm a road rage veteran. But, uh, what's all this about? It's not about you, Frank. I need to talk to Meredith. Oh, okay. I'll go have a smoke. Hey, Meredith. This is gonna sound super awkward. And hopeless. And desperate. And probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I've made up my mind about this. I'm leaving P.O. Yeah, okay, yeah. I sort of kind of figured you'd say that. Sorry, Robert. I know this will sound like crap, but I'm sure you'll find someone else. Thanks, Meredith. Well, I better get back to work again. Take care. You too, Robert. Okay, Meredith. Let's get you to the airport. I've got a double shift today, and the mail doesn't deliver itself. And there we go then. Thankfully, this is it. No more Robert. No more Providence Oaks, but we will say goodbye to the lake. So, woo! Thank Christ that bit's over. <laughs> but no, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the game, and I do hope you enjoyed the guide as well. You know, hopefully we had a good couple of laughs and everything, as we always do. Hopefully the endings didn't piss you off <laughs> too much as well. Uh, but don't forget, of course, if it did help, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. And also don't forget to check me out on my socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and also Patreon as well. A uh, big, huge, massive shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon, including TS Chan One, Tim G84, and Coast, and for everyone who's still sticking around, and for everyone who supports the show who's not on Patreon as well. Everything's always mega appreciated. So thank you so so much for watching, guys and gals, again, and I shall see you in the next one. But 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 big love.